Greetings, everyone. <laughs> and welcome to a very special Shudder to Shutter edition <laughs> of Monster Party. Monster Party! Monster, Monster Party! party. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, Wow. That's the sound of uh, like, film like getting uh, yeah, yeah it's sprung, film getting sprung. caught in a projector. That's a little hint. <laughs> in case you haven't read the episode description, well, speaking of description. <laughs> or if you've just tuned in, yeah, yes, if you, you randomly, randomly, who, randomly caught this on your like on your like shortwave radio, <laughs> right on who, your who, CB. Who are yeah. you, sir? I am Matt Weinhold. I am Sean Sheridan. I'm Larry Stroth. and I'm James Gonis. And for this episode, it's like we're giving a present to ourselves. Yes. Because this is a very special episode. It's going to check a lot of different boxes. Yeah. And it involves a very special friend of mine who we will introduce after I announce the title. But the title is... What is the title topic? Confessions of a Film Projectionist. Confessions of a film projectionist. Oh, what, what do they know? Confessions Why aren't they telling? Can we get them to tell? The, the, the mystery. Was, was, is this from a bygone I've era? got her diary. And there's a diary in the diary. I mean, this is so <laughs> meta. I mean, I don't know about you. I worked in a movie theater. The projectionist was just oh, yeah. someone that was just a star. Oh, yeah. No, it know? was like God. Yes. It was like yes. A, because you look in the back of the theater, you're watching this movie, and you look in the back of the theater and you see this flickering light just coming out of this hole in the wall, and you're like, wow, I guess that's where God lives. Yeah. Well, it's like it's like the, the Wizard of Oz, the person behind the curtain. Yes. Right. Yeah. And Matt, yeah. How can we do this show? Is there someone behind our curtain? Well, the person that's behind our curtain is a, a just an old and dear friend of mine, truly one of my heroes in life. And I do not say this lightly. She is a comedian, a podcaster, a film programmer, and she has a long history of being a film projectionist in some of the most celebrated theaters in Los Angeles. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Garyanna Abeda. Gary welcome. Welcome. I am intimidated by your guys' action figure collections. <laughs> intimidated. Well, well, yes, but I've never been a projectionist, a movie theater. Right. So yeah. I'm in awe of you. We collect yeah. plastic things, but you 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 make dreams happen. You live the you, dream. You made the show yeah. happen. Yes. Right. Uh, yeah, we do. We do. That was uh, hard. Uh, it still makes my heart race, though, when you guys started doing the, the film breaking. Yes. Sound of the film. Oh, yeah. I know. I know. It's never, I get, you can't shut it off. And there's right, been a lot right. of movies that'll have that. Sure. Yeah, like as an effect, like the film. I that that is like our lead. Wow. Is there is there a digital version of that? Like where <laughs> something happens where it just starts to pixelate or? <laughs> uh, yeah, it just goes to Spotify. It's <laughs> not as exciting. <laughs> it's really, well, it's really that's nice. Just the, the, the Spotify screen comes up, and you're just like, I, I, I guess we can listen to Hall and Oates. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> but listen, now you can call me an amateur projectionist because I've been showing films since I was a little kid. It started with Super right. Eight and Eight Millimeter. Oh yeah, and now I'm into all the sixteen. And one of the constants is the film getting caught in the projector or breaking. But the one that's ah. really awful is when you feed it in, you know, one of those automatic feeder super eights and you oh, just yeah. hear that sound where it just goes. Yeah. And you just well, picture a mouth the... just chewing on film. But, yeah. It's so horrible. But now did you have an interest in doing this from the same kind of background? Like, did you start, did you have a super eight projector and did you have those films too? Uh, no, no, I didn't. I always loved movies. Like it's really, I, I I was absolutely passionate about movies and got a job at a movie theater just as a concession person. 
Uh-huh. And uh, the projectionists got to wear their own clothes and they got like 25 cents more. So I was like, well, I would rather do that. So right. that's that's how I, I literally, that's why I started lobbying for the job. But everybody in the theater lobbies for that job. Do they really? So, yeah. yeah. And uh, oh, yeah. did you get it because you were, you immediately understood it and you were proficient and, and what kind of setup no. was it? Well, well th- I, this was in Colorado. I was a teenager and nobody really liked the guy that was the head of projection. Gary Skalski, nobody really wanted to work with him. <laughs> and <laughs> he needed somebody to help him fix the seats. Uh, and oh so I would God. go in early in the morning. And I was thinking, like, if this guy sees I'm a hard worker, then maybe he'll put me up there. Right. And it worked. I, I just would fix seats for him a couple of months. And <laughs> the guy, the main guy up there, Pee Wee, he's named, right? <laughs> Um, Pee Wee quit, and so I got put up there, and then everybody at the theater hated me. Um, because <laughs> just like because you got the job, people. like like just jealousy. No, no, no. It had nothing to do with me getting the job. They were just <laughs> they, <laughs> they just were just hateful. <laughs> so they uh, he put me up there, but I had a real knack for it. And after a year, they sent me to Denver. Uh, wow. to actually get certified in a projection training program, which they had back then, which was pretty cool. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah. They had the classroom and they had different projectors because there are different projectors. So we learned to throw it up like five of them, um, do different platter systems, that kind of stuff. Right. So right, that's, right. How, uh, that's how I, I, I like got into it, literally because – I wanted to wear my own clothes. So that was, <laughs> that, was that was why I didn't, I didn't, I ran some of your 16 though. Yes, Matt. you did. We, we, we ran so, some of your 16 millimeter at the Senate family. You don't yeah. show yourself short. You've got some amazing 16 millimeter stuff. I do have some good stuff. Yes. So I have a lot of 16 millimeter films that I've been collecting over the years. I've got features, I've got TV shows, like I have a bunch of Outer Limits and, you know, I won't bore our audience with this information because every other episode I go, I've got that on 16. <laughs> and uh, kind of like when I say, I got that on Blu-ray. Right, exactly. exactly. <laughs> or or, or yeah, kind of yeah. like how I have it in the box. Right, I have yeah, it in yeah. the box. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah, it's like you feel like you have to say it. But uh, one of the things that I do collect I put together these reels of trailers and they're a mixture of theatrical trailers and TV spots. And I had a couple that were like exploitation and car chases and things like that. Kung and I Fu. lent them to the Cine family. Kung Fu was the one that really brought the Kung Fu. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, that is a good one. It is a good one. And yeah. uh, so you guys played it there. And I think you told me that Tarantino oh, yeah. was in the audience yep. and, he, yeah. and he loved him. Really? He loved, he loved that reel. He, he got mad at uh, Hadrian, the guy who runs the place, because we were running them with music instead of the audio. We were playing them on the screen, and we like, were uh, just like a visual. Yeah. yeah, exactly. He was trying to create like a mood. Right. And, right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Quentin was like mad at him. So, what are you <laughs> doing? These are great. Yeah, you got to hear the them. you got to hear the hard boiled narrators and right, right, and all yeah. the sound effects. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, it was narrators. a jungle hell in the desert, like that kind of thing. <laughs> those narrators back then, they were so great, weren't they? I know. Oh, my God. There's yeah. certain voices you just know yeah. when you hear mm. them. Yeah. But so I good. also have to point out that among the wonderful theaters that Gariana worked at, one of the places that she worked was uh, the Cine Family, the silent movie. And yes. we had our wedding there, my wife and I, Carrie and I. Fantastic. And it was a great wedding. And uh, But... Gariana was part of the glue that helped this thing stay together. Oh. She really was. Oh, you're too yeah, you're too Yeah, she worked there. You were there. You yeah, were there she, at that she time. projected. I was she projected the 16 millimeter films that I brought. Wow. Oh. That, was the, uh, cere- that, that was part of the the ceremony. They had uh, these. He had the films going Frankenstein and you know all these going while while Castle the films. Uh, ceremony right, was going. Right. It was very cool. Yeah, yeah. And then she also ran interference. Anything that would go wrong, I go, yeah, give me a problem about it. And she'd go, I'll take care of it. And then, then it would go away. 
I will. I, I'm telling talking. you, I'm forever in your debt. But uh, hey, I I got a Ghost and Mr. Chicken DVD out of that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I had yeah. not seen that film, and that is an amazing film. Oh yes. That, oh um, yeah. I, one I, of our I, favorites. I, God dang, that's a, that's a good one. What's the one uh, with Don Knotts? The other one with the fish. I've run that one. Mr. Limpet. The Thank Incredible you, Mr. Mr. Limpet, the which is, Mr. I think we'll all agree, is charming, but not it's, really hilarious. It's no ghost to Mr. Chicken. No. Right. No. no ghost to Mr. Chicken. My, my but, next favorite Don Knotts film is The Reluctant Astronaut. Uh, yes. Very oh, yeah. funny one. Yeah, that one's very, got very, some great funny. stuff, especially when he's good. getting drunk in the bar. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah no, that, was a, that was a fantastic. And I, there's there's a scene with Don Knotts where he's just like, you know, I'm a loser. And there's this woman looking at him, and she's kind of like, you know, the saucy, trashy babe. And as he's just saying all this horrible shit about himself, she just goes, "I could really go for you." <laughs> <laughs> I love that guy. Uh, no, Gary. So, so, so you got into projection, doing being a projectionist. Now, most people, when they go to a movie theater, not necessarily today, but before this whole COVID, crazy COVID thing, a lot yeah. of these theaters have switched. They don't actually use giant platters with a film projection. But you, I mean, since the the inception of film. When it was first created, you had projectionists. Projectionists have been projecting yeah. films all the way through into like the, the 90s into the 2000s. But do you yeah. think that there's also now a, a, like a flip back there? Like some theaters are maybe switching back to doing film instead of doing a digital thing. I think the smart ones are. I, I really do think that the smart ones are. If it's um for shown digitally, the film is called the DCP, a digital cinema package. And they're just not putting everything. We've just, the three that we just mentioned are not on DCP. You can't get any Don Knotts on DCP. So if really? you want to show something like The Amazing Mr. Limpet or The Ghost of Mr. Chicken, you have to show a print. Really? And um, I think that that's one reason why a lot of the revival houses now are doing well because places can't run film anymore. So they can't, there's literally tens of thousands of films that they can't run. Mm. Really? Oh. Wow. Yeah. And oh, so, yeah. Let me yeah. so let me ask you, so they can't get a DVD and play it and just get the rights to that to play? Uh, they could, um, but they, it, it's better. It's a much better picture and sound for them to actually get a DCP of okay. it. Like, okay, yeah, okay, okay, okay. We showed, right. we showed a lot. That was one of the things that was really ahead of its time at the Cine family. They could literally show anything. They could show movies off of Zoom. They could show them off a of USB, okay. um, DVD, wow. Blu-ray, VHS, uh, whatever That's awesome. wow. anybody wow. brought in. And they ran film Real to real, like they used to, like when yeah. it started. I was right. changing over every 15 to 20 minutes. I'm actually making an edit going back and forth. There was no platter there. Wow. So wait a minute. So if funny. you could ex if you could explain to the audience, because okay. we, we we may have some younger people here. Yeah, who have no concept <laughs> who have of no what concept of this. So so like yeah. so the first your classic film projection setup is what? It would be two projectors and they come on a reel and a reel is like <clears> 20 <throat> minutes long, about 15 to 20 minutes. I think the absolute maximum that fits on it, a reel is 21 minutes. Okay. And that's for the ones like that's a, just a standard reel. And at the end of that, there is a Q dot, which is if you sometimes watch old movies, even now, like on TCM, you'll see the Q dot. Oh yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, a lot yeah. Of the, the, the real DVDs. the real change. Yeah, a little circle image. or something in the corner oh, of the oh, screen. Oh. Yeah, Top right yeah. In the corner. <laughs> I always tell when I'm trying to explain it to somebody that doesn't know it. If you watch the Fight Club, Brad yes. Pitt's a projectionist in that, and he actually he he says in the industry they call it a cigarette burn, and he points up. Yeah, yeah. Right. Here's an yes. interesting fact that yep. is actually the cue change. 
That's actually the real change. Because <laughs> you have to. Pointing. Oh, right. that's oh. awesome. Oh, that's great. That's the great. Q dot at the end of the reel. So <laughs> that cool. is, yeah, that is one of, if they want to see what one looks like. Right, and right. And then that, there's six seconds between them. And it is timed to that. And then the second one, you actually physically change the projector on the first cue, you start the motor. As soon as you see it, you start the motor. And then you put your hand on the changeover and that brings the picture and light to the second projector and it makes that live and it does it instantly. So that you can't tell that there's right. been- You know, I have to- I, I, You know how I know this though? I mean, the way I got a real education about this is from a Columbo episode. Yes. <laughs> there, there's, a, there, awesome. there's a classic Columbo episode where Robert Culp is the murderer and he kills a guy by inserting subliminal messages on a film that makes him get thirsty so that he knows he's going to go out and get a drink and he shoots him in the hallway when he's getting a drink. But huh? but the, and he, he's like an advertising executive. He makes commercials and things. But the projectionist, played by Chuck McCann in the episode, <laughs> is on to him. And be, because Chuck McCann... His way of knowing when the reel's about to end, he puts a little nickel right at the edge of the thing. So the nickel falls and he hears it. He knows he has to change the thing. But Robert Culp did it when he was in around. He knows that something was up because the nickel didn't, there was no, there was nickel. no nickel. Yeah. And so yeah. Of, course Robert, yeah. of course, Robert Culp has to kill Chuck McCann. But that yeah. was, <laughs> but it was really fascinating how that's how he kind of learned how all that works. Like it's the time he physically changed to the second projector. Yep. Really cool. Well, most places won't loan you a film if you cut it. Like a lot of the archives and stuff, if you cut it, which you have to do if you clatter it, they, they won't let you borrow a film from uh, any of the major archives if you're going to cut it. So that's right. why, like, well, the Cine family, they just didn't have room. That uh, You were in that booth, Matt. It's yeah, oh, yeah. Literally, it's like a closet. And so they only had room for the two projectors. And places like, you know, the Director's Guild... And Arclight had it set up because so they could run also, you That's know, cool. so they could run actually because that opens it up even more because the studios, they don't have a lot of stuff on right. film right. anymore, but, which but is Gary, heartbreaking. Gary, there's, so there's the reel to reel, but what's the platter? What is the platter? The platter system? is what they went to when they started wanting to open they went from like the big house, you mm -hmm. know, like Grauman's Chinese, like right. the Egyptian, like, like early on, it was just, there were these movie palaces. Oh yeah. So what they wanted to do, and if you guys remember, it started going to twins and then, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. uh, Triplexes. Three plus, right. you know, and what they were doing is you used to have to have a projectionist because of how dangerous projection work was. It was really just because of the nitrate films. That nitrate film, which for those of you that don't know, the nitrate, the N is the same N as in TNT. It's what they use <laughs> right. to make explosives. So and they would explode out. or they would yeah, certainly catch it, it fire. Yeah. If it starts on fire, it will not go out. The, wow. There's nothing. It, could, it will burn underwater. It burns at such a high temperature. God. Oh, my God. <laughs> You could light it and throw it into a swimming pool. It is still going to burn. Is that right? Oh. Yeah, yeah. Which is what you guys know, Night of the Comet, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. That's oh, why, yeah. if you remember, that's why the projectionist and his girlfriend survive is because the projection booth is lead. They used to make them fireproof ah. because if they started on fire, they didn't want the whole building to burn down. Ah. And wow. there was a really, wow. really good chance that there was going to be a fire. So, <laughs> yeah, especially back in the old days, people were smoking all the time. Like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Where was it going to start? <laughs> cigar, you know? Yeah. Because all projectionists smoked a cigar, too. While they're... <laughs> yeah. Cinema, remember Cinema Paradisia? Oh, yes. yeah, yeah. 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 Great film. Yeah, that's what takes his eyes out. If the film oh, yeah. starts yeah, on fire, yeah. you used to always have a big pair of scissors there. And you had to make a choice. Like if you were close to the projector and if you could cut it before it got to the reel, then you were all right. If not, you had to get out because Jeez. once it hit the reel, all these lead curtains come down and you just wow. burn inside with it. So you so, couldn't get out of the room? No, no. Holy you shit. couldn't 
<laughs> you had to make a decision. Like there was like it was it depends on where you were standing. That's it was definitely it was definitely they have a bathroom. It's definitely worth that extra twenty five cents an hour. I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I, that's I did not know that. That's amazing. Wow, it wasn't the planner though. Also, it was devised so like the projectionist would actually edit the reels together and it would just make one giant yeah. Uh, right. reel yeah. of film and you would lay it down like a record and it yeah. would, and, and it would oh, go yeah, through right. a little loop into the projector and go down on the a bottom platter, like a giant record player. So it rewinds and then you, you just take out the center and you put, it's called the brain, which controls the speed. You put that in the center and you can immediately start again. But they mm. did that because, uh. um, and then they use foil tapes for like the lights to stop the show. You put um, different foil cues on the actual print in order to stop it, start it, whatever. You can do anything with the with a series of foil cues. Mm. And it just rewind and you can immediately go. All you would have to do is clean out the projector. And that allowed them to have two and three theaters but still one person running it and oh, that right, is when right. they went to like the polyester and acetate film because they couldn't do it when it was nitrate it was just too dangerous yeah they it had to like, have it seemed, like being a, it seemed like being a coal miner was safer than being a projectionist <laughs> back in the day yeah <laughs> the nitrate yeah, yeah. I, right. I had a friend of mine who worked at a drive-in and so it was kind of fun to go in there because you know we bring girls back there in the booth and you know it was, it was fun but it was yeah. interesting just to see the mechanism and and yeah he would work i think the one that he worked there were two different screens and so he had these two separate platter setups yeah and yeah. it was this massive thing yeah and very i was big. always it, it, you know, and you understand it conceptually but just to see this almost like a rube goldberg kind of contraption going Right. It's impressive. Yeah. 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 The platters, um, it kind of, in a way, I think it just really changed things and kind of really helped to push the blockbuster, you know, mm. because there were no single houses and they didn't, they weren't locked into a film. You would go and there was a bunch of films to choose from. Right. You know? right. So right. the history of it is really interesting and incredibly dangerous facts yeah. oh yeah well it sounds like it. An incredibly dangerous one of the sad things for me though because you're talking about when they went from the single theater and they'd split them up yeah i remember so many theaters in the bay area i'm sure larry can attest to this too i mean we all can but i mean there are these beautiful movie palaces just these gorgeous places i remember one called the alhambra on polk street in san francisco and they cut that up and there was a bunch of them that they did this to. And you'd yeah. go to the theater and you'd see like where the wall was and it'd be cutting right down the middle of this, this beautiful artwork on the ceiling and just, these, right. you know, old yeah. deco chandeliers and that's just yeah. sad. And I, I mean, yeah. I, I yeah. get it. I understand that, you know, everybody has to make a living. But it was it's almost like, you know, make a new building for that. And let's, can we, is there some yeah. way that the city can support this place so we can keep it well let, let's as this back, landmark you know, when we were we were growing up you know back in the 70s and the 80s you know the whole world of film was changing and right. what happened for me was one of my first jobs was working for the company Sayufi which owned the theaters the Century Theaters Century 21 22 these were really uh, big in the yeah. San Jose Bay Area Ooh, I remember that and yeah. they were these giant domes and they were built in the 60s based on the whole Cinerama dome thing right. and so you had all these dome theaters thinking they're all going to be showing Cinerama dome well it didn't exactly work that way so here they have these giant theaters and they came up to the decision we'll just make a giant wall splitting it in half now mm -hmm. they did that with a couple theaters fortunately the one theater that they had century 21 they kept it as a one single dome and i believe uh 
the city of San Jose has actually preserved that because the other theaters have oh, that's nice. been torn down, which is really right. sad. But the thing that gets me is, I mean, I worked at Century 24. There was another dome theater called Century 25, and the problem with the design was it was a smaller dome theater. So when they split it in half, the screen was kind of at a funky angle. Yeah, so yeah. to sit in the center of the screen to look straight at it, you had to sit close to the wall, the middle yeah. of the wall, that's so not weird. in the center weird. of the theater. And so, and the problem with that is, if you're watching Sophie's Choice at this at the quiet moment, you can hear Raiders of the Lost Ark next to you. Right. Yeah, that was always a problem. There was a place in San Francisco called the Empire, and it was in uh, West Portal. And West Portal was like this little city within a city, just nice, quaint little neighborhood with mom and pop shops. And there was a great toy store called Toy Village that I would go to all the time, and oh, yeah. and it was lovely. And then the theater there was the Empire. And then they did that. They cut this thing into three and there was the bigger theater. And then there were the two smaller theaters. Right. right. And if you were in the bigger theater, you were fine because you'd be watching the, you know, the A film and uh, the sound was good. But if you were in any of the side theaters, yeah, it was like you had to just get used to the sound of that other movie coming through the wall. Because I don't know what they made, though. It was rice paper or whatever, but it was you always heard. And we we understand if you're if you own a theater, you want as many people in because each film is different when you like when. Return of the Jedi was playing at the theater. The theater would only get, let's say, 25 cents of every $5 ticket. But let's say you got a cheaper film, like let's say Porky's. Well, then the theater might get something like 35 cents or 45 cents of every $5 ticket. So, right. so for a theater, it was better to try to have as many theaters going at the same time, right. you know, even yeah. though the film experience may not have been that great. And then of course you had all these people come, more people come in buying your popcorn or your sodas sure. or your hot dogs. You're That's making money on other things. <laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, my, my experience with theaters, I moved to Los Angeles in the early eighties and I think it was made like my, literally my second job ever was at the Culver theater in Culver city. And that was a beautiful theater, which was a huge kind of grand theater that opened in the forties. And it still had like this kind of Baroque architecture and, you know, the the etched aluminum panels on the concession stand and a really nice ornate box office and chandeliers and a huge sign towering sign of the building. You could see from all of Culver city practically. Wow. But what I didn't know was that, so I, in like early 80s, I started working there just on the concession stand and, and as an usher. And it was a triplex. It had turned into a triplex in the 70s. And so the same kind of thing, Matt, where it was like the main middle one was a bigger one and the two were kind of smaller. So it was I didn't realize that it was kind of on its last legs because in 1989 it closed. Oh. But but this is like early 80s. But for me, it was three theaters with double features and this theater play like every slasher film, yeah. all the horror Ooh. films. I mean, I, I, everything, wow. like, like the howling, I must've seen 20 times there. They played right. everything. Yeah. It was, it was the, it was like that golden time. And so the I, empire was like that for us too. Yeah. And, and it, yeah. right. It was always the smaller theaters that played all that stuff. Right. And sometimes they played a really, even like just obscure kind of stuff in the seventies just to fill out a double bill. I used to go there all the time and I'd watch a movie and then I'd sneak into the other theater. Yeah. Yeah. And so I must've seen day of the animals 10 times. <laughs> right. Right. And I, I worked there for a couple of years and, you know, eventually I was kind of like, kind of like a semi assistant manager, you know, and I, liked it. I, I could go, and I could go. <laughs> Look out ladies. Out. Yeah. And I, but after hours, I could go and, and see every movie I wanted to, you know, so it was really cool. And th- I was looking up recently, I looked up some photos of it and there was a photo from 1983 and it showed the marquee. And I remember these movies there. It, the, the, it was three mo- three theaters, three double features. One was Peter Pan, which they guess were re- re-released, know, re-released yeah. uh, on the double bill with Trail of the Pink Panther. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the other one was One Dark Night, which is this horror film from the 80s with the Boogeyman. Ooh, and the okay. Other was, and the other was E.T. with Clash of the Titans. Oh, oh that's like, that's that's like heaven. Double. That's like yeah, heaven that's for good. Me. I mean, it's like, so it was just interesting that I really, I don't think I maybe appreciate it, realize how much, how cool it was at the time. But well, right. I mean, I just, today I was looking up all these old theaters. Yeah, yeah. And it just really brought me back 
down memory lane. And there's this right. theater in San Francisco that was very near the high school that I ended up going to. And it was called the Park Side, and it was on Terravel. Mm-hmm. And when I first started going to this theater, this was the theater that did the uh, children's matinee program. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. And so you, I got these tickets in school. And I remember it was a big sheet of paper with these little pink tickets and you would tear them off for each weekend. Mm-hmm. And your mom and dad would drop you off at the theater and you'd watch. And you, and I never knew what the movie was going to be. So right. I'd show up and it could be, it was all great stuff though. It was always like um, Dexter Riley movies, like, you know, the strongest man in the world. Right. Right. And, yeah. uh, and that's where I first saw ghost of Mr. Chicken. Oh, wow. But, no it, would also, but it would also be like destroy all monsters. Wow. It'd be long stocking. Uh, <laughs> Pippi Longs, yeah, I think yeah. I think yep. there was one there. I saw, I saw Pippi Longstock. Yeah, Mr. Limpet. Uh, I think Forbidden Planet was also on that one. Cool, Another but guy. it was great. And so then, cut two. I'm now in high school, and so I'm really getting into metal, classic okay. rock metal, Black right. Sabbath, Led Zeppelin, and I'm smoking a good amount of pot. Okay. <laughs> so every weekend they would have this midnight show kind of deal Mm. and i would go with my friends and this was a theater now not all theaters as we all know will allow you to smoke pot in the theater usually they'll try to stop you (laughs) i i think that number is still zero yeah it's not these days yeah no way but back in this day we would go to the park side now we were all teenagers and what they did is that at this point The theater was only running like half the time. And it was, I think it was only doing these midnight shows because the Mm. bottom half of the theater was now a daycare center. Yeah. (laughs) And so you would look down, you'd be in the balcony and those were the only seats. And you'd look down and you'd see like a bunch of kids' toys and little tables. and So like the pot smoke would sift down to the kids. (laughs) (laughs) That's what I'm hearing. Yeah. So anyway, so, you know, the the daycare center would close and then the hooligans would show up and it would always be a double feature. It would always be the song remains the same. Like always. (laughs) Every weekend for fucking years. The song remains the same. And then it would be a different co-feature so it'd be like the Jimi yeah. hendrix movie or pink right. floyd or or yes songs yeah, oh my god those, you, you, you'll want to kill yourself after you watch yes songs as the second <laughs> feature but anyway but how, but how do they expect people not to be smoking pot if they're showing those movies <laughs> that's True. what i'm but it was it was a business plan they yeah. right, obviously right. they went well how can we make a little money we'll just turn a blind eye as long as the yeah. kids don't burn down the theater and i went to this set of shows weekly and i'm telling you the worst that happened is maybe somebody threw up or you know they spilled their beer or they but usually it would be a bunch of kids getting high and they pass out i don't know how many times i woke up in the middle of jimmy at monterey matt matt just just really just really quickly that theater that you described I went, to, when I went to San Francisco State. I went to that theater, and that's where I saw Alfred Hitchcock's Rebecca for the first time. Oh, my God. Because I went wow. to the theater, and I remember looking down, what the hell is the daycare <laughs> center doing down there? Yeah. That's it's strange. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I actually like, went, like, I went to that theater a few times. Yeah, it's and I, I loved time. it. It was like, it was like a little – because normally back when I was doing all this, the other option would be you get together with your friends. Maybe you somehow – finagle a keg you know and and you find some sort of you know vacant lot and you set up a keg and you have a kegger party and this is the bay area so you're freezing your fucking dick off and and it's just horrible and you you know you're trying to talk to some girl or whatever or with your friends and you're freezing and 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 so the the idea that you could go inside and watch jimmy page and smoke pot and not be fucked with Right. was great. So we would go there every week. It's sad to see like how that some of those theaters, you know, there's no such thing like those around. Although with the Culver's Theater, it did have a fairly happy ending in that it was remodeled in the t- early 2000s and became the Kirk Douglas Theater, a performing arts theater, oh, which, okay. it is, which it is right. now. So they show plays and it's it's yeah. an, and actually, actually is an historic monument. But man, yeah, I mean, I miss those days of just, you know, that there was always something cool playing. Carrie, a few years back, she went to see a revival showing of King Kong, the original King Kong. Oh, wow. And they had this woman who was a stand-in 
for Faye Ray. Wow. No she way. was like 99 years old. Wow. And she was telling these great stories and she was saying how, you know, she was told, don't you ever tell anyone that you did any of these scenes because she was supposed to, she was <laughs> right. basically doing all the scenes that Faye Ray didn't want to do on the Empire right. State Building. Oh, okay. So she goes to see this and I wasn't able to go, but she is taking pictures of this old movie palace in downtown Los Angeles. And you, you know, there's, there's so many of them that are just gorgeous. Oh, and yeah. She's taking pictures of the bathroom and this is ornate tile with yeah. Egyptian motifs and all this yep. crazy stuff. And this is the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. and, and then she yeah. shows the ceiling and it's like, oh my God, these things are landmarks that need to be protected, I think. Yeah. I, I honestly do too. Hey, here's a little inside scoop, you know, like if you're playing a double feature, like uh, I think uh, Sean was mentioning, you have yeah, a like, platter system. And it's uh, got three. So you're the, both of those features are right there. Uh-huh. So you've got to check the title. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. Right. Oh. You're threading up. True. So I'm at Arclight. <laughs> this girl threads up the wrong movie. And what they were doing is it was really more of a split. They were playing a kid's movie during the day. And then at night... Nine and they and a half were weeks. playing. They were doing it. <laughs> uh, they were. Do, they were doing it adult. So instead of cars, she threaded up one of the the Saw movies. Oh, oh no! Wow, really? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh my god! Wow. Full of kids. Theater full of kids. Oh. And uh, she starts Saw instead of Cars too. Oh, and, and just literally children wow. running, screaming <laughs> in, in, into the lobby. And Ooh. I was reading another another one in the paper where that happened. It actually made the like national news because the girls what? started shame instead of Steve McQueen's shame. Are you guys familiar with that film? It, I it's I that. For no. Yeah, yeah it, it's very good, but it starts out. It's Michael Fassbender, and he's nude for the first oh, 10 wow. minutes. Like, he's, it starts, and he's naked. <laughs> and what were they expecting? <laughs> yeah, naked walking around his apartment in New York. And at This the- isn't Frozen. <laughs> <laughs> what a weird-looking icicle. <laughs> oh, my God. I remember, and I, it was unfortunate. I mean, the girl who did that got fired, but... Um, wow, yeah, yeah, them's the breaks. You, yeah. but, but look, you, you have to really be cautious. Yeah, um, I'm sure. Yeah, and make and the, sure that you're actually. Sometimes it's just going to be like, oh, oh man, I got to unthread this, and then I got to thread the other one, and now we're all off <laughs> right. schedule. But it's a lot of time. <laughs> it's like the second feature can be wildly different. Right. Right. Hey, let, let me ask like, you when 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 you were showing a, a film. Mm-hmm. And the film would burn. Yeah. Did most people clap or boo? <laughs> <laughs> it depends on the crowd. Okay. It right. depends on the crowd. Late night, wow. I'm guessing clap. Exactly. Yes. All right. Yes. Right. The late night <clears throat> crowds, your midnight crowds, or just your people that are there to watch like grindhouse stuff. Like right, I remember right. at the Suna family doing a Fulci, we were just showing a, three of his movies. Oh, nice. nice. And what happened is one of the projectors broke. So I'm having to show it on one projector. Oh, and they're just oh. hearing the real changes. Like, oh, there's yeah. just like when it would stop, they would just go nuts. Until it <laughs> oh, wow. They're the most forgiving, awesome people. <laughs> right, right. Horror fans, I'm telling you. Ever. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> you know, yeah, yeah. Cool. like it, there was a real break, you know, like right after the the zombie punches the shark. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, right. And, and, uh, and zombie, zombie, yeah. zombie two. Yeah. It, yeah. 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 It is zombie two. It's it well, zombie it, two, yeah. right? It was yeah, called yeah. zombie yeah. two in Italy so that they could fool people to thinking it's Dawn of the Dead. It's called zombie right. here, yeah. though, because they didn't want it to be confused with Dawn of the Dead. Right. 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 Exactly. But there's no confusing. It's, all, it's, also <laughs> called, it's, it's also just called zombie flesh eaters as well. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, it, it, that's where the real break is. He like wow, the shirt, and that's then it amazing. stopped. 
And they like shook. It's almost They're like shaking the building. Almost Everybody like it came out of the screen. Like <laughs> but you know, if that happens when you're running Lawrence of Arabia, yeah, yeah. Millimeter. How dare you? There, there's gonna be there's you know, gonna be some bad words. Yeah. There's there's several weird stories I had from Culver Theater, but I have to say this reminds me of one I just have to say. This was when I was like I was kind of like an assistant manager there was they were pretty loose when it came to the uh, child supervision of like kids getting into the R rated movies and stuff. Right. I mean, fantastic. We, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. there was, one, <clears throat> there was one evening where I was working there and some woman who was like a handler came in with a group of severely men- mentally handicapped kids. Okay. Uh-oh. Okay. I mean, she was, hand, you know, she was handling them and she was supervising them. They were coming for a night out to see a movie. Which is fine, and but what, what's the movie? That's the thing. <laughs> uh, I, I, you know, th- th- this was, this was, was a triple. Cruising? No, no. <laughs> was, so they, they, I didn't know until they got the tickets to which theater, which movie they were going to see. The handler brought these, so maybe, about, about, maybe about five kids. And they, first of all, they were too young anyway, period, to see an R-rated movie. OK. And, you know, again, they were obviously mentally handicapped, but, you know, she was taking him. She took them to see pieces. What? <laughs> yeah. No. Oh. And it starts out with like this murder and there's like this naked woman getting chucked up by an axe. I'm like and I, I went oh. to the manager. I said, look, hey, this isn't right. I, mean, <laughs> I just right. don't think I, I, this is first. I mean, just just on the ages alone and he actually went in there and took him out and said you got to go see another movie because i just felt horrible it was not right no that's terrible that's it's terrible. not right i will that's never true. forget that i'm like i'm like i don't the, the, the handler she i mean you know from my perspective she was probably like in her 20s you know yeah, she, she didn't care she, yeah, she, she, she probably wanted to see she the movie and like TV. yeah right but exactly it was, yeah it was so irresponsible i was like no i mean no, any, any other movie like just don't take right. to see pieces yeah i mean it's just not right i'm sorry but like well, that was yeah, crazy. I mean, yeah, that's a, okay, yeah, Gar- Gary, Anna, well, okay, Dar- Darby O'Gill, no, uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> I mean, come on, you mentioned, <laughs> no, but you mentioned breaks, breaks in films, okay, oh, oh yeah, now, yeah. unlike Sean, I didn't have a, an experience quite like that, but there were two breaks <laughs> in two films that I was a theater attendant at. And okay. one of the things that we had to do is there were times that we actually had to go into the theater at certain times to make sure that the sound was okay. Right, right. Was Absolutely, okay, yeah. Focus and stuff. Because the projectionists would always do that at the beginning, but then they get busy or whatever. And so right. our job was to go in there. And, you know, I worked at one of the A-grade theaters. So in mm-hmm. 1982, you had... Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, you know, we right. had, in, in, you know, War Games, you know, Raiders of the Lost Ark. I mean, it was great, but there was this great break in Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. <laughs> it was right the moment when Captain Kirk is there in the ship and it's like, oh my gosh, you know, I don't know if we're going to have enough uh, uh, juice to get away from Khan's ship, which is about to explode. Right. And then, you know, the guy says to Captain Kirk, Captain Kirk, the thing is off online. And, and he goes, oh, Mr. Sulu, go. And the ship goes into warp speed right before Khan's ship explodes. Oh. The break in the film was right when Captain Kirk goes, uh, Mr. Sulu, go! And he goes, the ship goes, and right when the ship was about to go, white. It was oh. an exploded. And the whole wow. audience went, oh! and, I'm, and I'm in the theater. What do I do? I'm like, ah, ah, oh, run. And, I, and I run. run. I, and check this out. Check this, this killed me. I run into the into the area where this concession. Guys, guys, the film broke. They, they go, well, teleprojections. They go, well, well where, where, where is it? Go, I think he's in the box office, you know, trying to pick up on the, the girl. Oh. Like, oh. like, banging on the door. Oh. The, the guy, I'm like, banging on the door, and he takes his fucking sweet time. He gets out and goes, the film broke, the film broke. And he goes, ah! and he, right? Oh, yeah. People have yeah. That's a lot of come out. light going through. You can actually break the lens. Yeah. Wow. Oh, is really? that right? Oh. Really? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. You'll crack but, it pretty quickly, too. Is, the, wait, yeah. did, did it melt when uh, before it went to white? Like, did you get that effect? No, no, no. It just, it it just broke. Solid, it was a solid break. Okay. But wow. the best one, the best one, which was frightening, <laughs> was in War Games. Do you guys remember yeah. War Games with Matt? Sure, yeah. 
Now there is a yeah. I actually wrote this down because I, I'll I'll never forget uh, when it happened. The character I think his name is John Woods. He plays on um, a Stephen Falcon, and it's when Ali Sheedy and Matthew Broderick they go and find the mysterious Stephen Falcon. Oh, yeah, the scientist guy. The scientist like, yeah. explain the, what's the deal with this computer. Right. And Stephen Falcon says to them, he goes, he he says, you know. Man destroying itself, it's just following the evolutionary chain. We all do this. And he says, he says something like, just a burst of bright light and we're vaporized. At that moment, <laughs> film went, <laughs> uh, <laughs> earned it and went white. And the audience went, <gasps> like this. I was in the theater at that time. And again, <laughs> oh, that's oh good. God, that's hilarious. That's great. Those I love that. I was in the what theater. are the chances? Yeah, Beautiful. what are the odds of that? And, I love and, that. And of course, let's say the film breaks. What you have to do, it's a process. So you have yeah. these platters. And so, and I actually got to run up with a projectionist and I got to watch him do it. How he had to take the film and pull it over to a center table where he had a little edit thing and right. he had to splice put tape over put, flip it over tape Jeez. splice and then rethread it the funny thing about star trek 2 the wrath of khan after that break so then when i went to theater to watch it what you would see is captain Kirk go sulu go and you'd see the ship go and it's about to go and then all of a sudden it'd be, it'd be gone you know you'd, <laughs> oh, you know, what's there's, there's a whole right. clip, there's a whole clip that was vanished wow. wow yeah yeah you'll you'll lose some frames on generally especially if it's a platter and especially if you're not there if you're yeah. not doing your job because it'll it'll keep going yeah so what happens it'll like with like going. So like in there, and back then, then there were like a lot of films that just were missing little frames here and there, you know, like yeah, there was sure. probably yeah. rare to have an absolute pristine print with every frame yeah. after being run so much, right? Well, I, 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 absolutely. You, I, I mean, Matt just mentioned uh, King Kong. It was only four years ago they found some missing, the, the missing footage from King Kong. Which right. I yeah, have on 16. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, With, it's, but yeah, they found that in an archive in Tokyo. Wow. You know, so you remember, like you, you've of course all seen it. And when yeah, he falls yeah. down the Empire State Building, he's like, like he yeah. was, uh, like, uh, yeah, he uh, hits it a couple times, like going down. Yeah, Larry was just explaining it. It like, yeah, it, it's there. He stu He used to stutter. Yeah. There because was a, oh, right. Was, like, there was a missing. gap. Yeah. Oh, there was yeah. also yeah. isn't there. There's also in the print that I have, there's a scene that I don't remember seeing when I first saw the film, which was there's a native being crushed by yes. Kong. Right. And yeah. that's scary. That's and a also, scary. Yeah. And Faye gets her clothes peeled off. Right. That's yeah. the one I remember. Yeah. That was removed for television. <laughs> but, uh, right, right. Oh. You know, it's yeah. funny. It's what's funny too is the thing about these prints, you know, the 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 studios, they never thought of these prints lasting years and years and years. But every once in a while at a revival, someone will say, oh, we got the print to, let's say, Creature from the Black Goon, or let's say it came from outer space or something, and it's an older print. And the problem right. is I'll never forget seeing this one Creature from the Black Lagoon print, and it was supposed to be 3D, but it was just the one film thing. And it had all these gaps in it because over the years you would have right. a yeah. film break or whatever. <clears throat> I've seen an old print and it's so frustrating, but now it's like, you do have studios thinking that, gee, maybe it's worth the money to try to restore some of these films to try to make sure that people aren't going to see a, a, a broken print. Right. And like you now said, there's, yeah. Yeah, there's more, there's more effort and, and yeah. like knowledge about that now, we, I think. We, yeah. I remember my friend, Eddie Webster and I, we went to, there was a, <laughs> a great name. Yeah, Eddie no, Webster. I love it. Eddie, Eddie, he was name. one of my partners in crime. You've been hanging and, out with uh, Eddie Webster again? Eddie Webster. <laughs> and Eddie and I, would he would be the guy that would go with me to all the punk shows. Right. And when we'd go, and we were we would go downtown to the Revival House, because if you went to the ones downtown, there was a place called The Strand. And it went by a number of other names, but when I went, it was called The Strand. And it was, you know, you went to this theater and you were taking your life in your own hands. <laughs> but it was also the place where you could see Dawn of the Dead and do bong hits. And um, so anyway, so one weekend we're like, hey, let's go see 2001 Space Odyssey. Oh, yeah. And we go oh, to the yeah. Strand. And I, we should have known better because the Strand, 
no one ever cleaned that floor since <laughs> the day it opened, right? I mean, I mean, it was it was like it was like that theater where they're doing the cabaret in Escape from New York. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. right. So, uh, so we're in there, and uh, and they run the film, and we're you know we're all we they do you know how in the in two thousand one Space Odyssey first there's that black section where they're just playing the music, they're doing the overture, right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. and then finally. You see the planets on the screen. Right. And we're watching it. And finally, the plants come on. And you see, I swear, it was like nine emulsion lines, green emulsion <laughs> lines. Oh, oh, and it was like it was raining point. lasers. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, and we both just went, ah, oh! and like, and like, even like these regular guys who I think went in there to, you know, catch a couple winks. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> and you know it, it, it kind of clears up a little bit but then it's yeah, just like yeah. from that point on you're just noticing lines yeah yeah and i, and yeah, I, yeah. I can't it's stand it the ones that move those are the worst oh yeah. those are terrible yes oh, yeah, yeah. If, if it's if it's got movement to it it really it that one yeah that's hard yeah. To, it's hard to but, Blank it's too out. distracting. Yeah, and especially yeah. we're so spoiled now. I mean, everything is about pristine prints and like digital HD. Like you know, we're so used to that now. But yeah, I mean, uh, so yeah, many- yeah, but you know, the prints have a life of their own. True, like, I true. Mean, he was yeah. talking about like footage missing. Yeah. I swear to you guys, I have never played. This is hand to God. I have never played a print of Fast Times at Ridgemont High that was missing footage when she leaves the pool. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm not joking. Hand, hand to God. Hand to God. Yeah, I, I, I have a collection of those frames in my, in my house. <laughs> now, for listeners, if you're not familiar with it, it's a very famous scene in yes. Fast Times Original. It's the best scene. It'll put a spring in your step. <laughs> yes. Especially if you're in another area. 16. Yes. And I finally, we were at, I, we ran at the Center Family, and right. it was a new print. And I was so excited because I was like, I am finally going to be able to run this pristine print. Like I can finally check that box off. Uh-huh. The only spice in the entire film. What? <laughs> oh. brand new. The print was brand new. Wow. And there was spice. I was, I couldn't. Wow. That. Uh, yeah, who knew, yeah, that's who knew that, the story. Who yeah. knew that Kevin, Kevin Klein had that kind of power? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's a crime against humanity, that is. That, yes, oh, truly. some of the, you know, a lot of the old ones, I mean, they've been around. Sometimes you'll, you'll play one. I think I, I invited you when we showed War of the Gargantuas, didn't I? Yes, to, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, cool. that print. Yeah, I, I, a friend of mine, no names, has the only print of that that exists. There's one. Wow. Yeah, and I hate and when they, when they, when you, you find like there's missing footage of the topless scene and where the gargantua is. It's gone. I hate that. <laughs> Wait, I hate that. When Wait the brown gargantua shows his tits, it's like it's, oh, it's cut up. Oh, you were telling a Heartbreak. joke. And, uh, <laughs> I hate it when my boner gets stuck in my throat. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? No, 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 no. Uh, uh, James, I got to ask, James, did you ever work in a movie theater? No, I never did. I never did. I, I did. I grew up in New York and I was, I was going to say that, um, you know, talking about Matt's experiences in downtown uh, San Fran, I never went to 42nd Street. I never saw a Grindhouse movie there because even you know, I, I went to Times Square all the time to see first run movies because the screens were big and that was like the place to go. Right. But I never went to the Deuce. I never went to 42nd Street. And I, I kind of regret it in a way. Not that much, but it was to have this then, experience. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But even then, it was like, oh, I wouldn't be caught dead in one of those <laughs> I don't, like, I don't, well, That's, I don't that's think, some rough yeah. territory, especially but, back then. But even yeah. like yeah, was early dangerous. 80s, like even early 80s, I mean, there were gang members and there were fights in the theater, in the Culver Theater in the 80s. And we had cops that were security that had to be there all the time. Because there were fights and there were, you know, it was, it well, was sometimes shady patronage there. Horror movies too, unfortunately. Yeah, it was, well, yeah, when you have some like pieces playing. And when, yeah. You know, yeah, I mean, you're going to get that kind of audience, you know. So yeah, it was, it was I, quite I, I remember times. I remember going with a girlfriend at the time and you might know her, Gariana, uh, Andrea Levin. Yes. Yeah. 
And so she was my girlfriend in San Francisco. She did not care for a you? lot of the movies I like. Oh, and me, <laughs> and me. <laughs> Get the full acquired. report from her. But uh, you're, you're, you're an acquired taste. <laughs> that's for that's true. That is that is very much the case. And so, yeah, this is one more reason for that, and that right, is right. that. You know, we go to these movies and every once in a while, I was like, I want to see something that I want to see. <laughs> so right. I dragged I dragged right. her to see, you know, Nightbreed and she right. weathered that. And that was fine. You know, what's well, a romantic and, movie? That's right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if you look at it the right way, <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a chick flick. But uh, so then I, we're going to go see Child's Play 2. Right. And okay. oh fuck, okay, <laughs> you know. So I drag her to the theater, and we walk in, and I swear a riot is about to take place. Like, wow, and the movie really? hasn't started. It's just, and no. we just we looked in there and went, you know, uh, yeah, let's watch uh, Gregory's Girl. Let's. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, did she force you to watch Beaches after that? <laughs> <laughs> well, she wasn't. She wasn't. To be fair, she was not that person either. Oh, but, cool, good, good. But it was. It was really because she had really good taste in comedy and and movies, right, uh, right. per se. It's just that horror is not everyone's thing. No, right. no, I don't like horror movies. I don't like them that much. I really don't. But you've I, had to project been, a bunch of them, haven't you? I've had to, <laughs> and I, I have, and I've had to watch. They used to think it was funny. You know, because like a lot of times we have to screen the print to make sure that everything oh, yeah. mm -hmm. right. is actually put together correctly. Yes, and that right. there's, I mean, sometimes you would get a movie and it's like, well, this is a foreign language and there's no subtitles, like things like what? that. Really? Oh, yeah. That stuff like that happens all the time. Wow. Stuff like that happens all the time. You would be shocked. It doesn't happen in first run. Houses right, right. Mod, but but yeah, like in right. revival houses, things right. like that occur constantly. Right. Wow. Or it would be the wrong movie. It, it, it's just, oh, right, right. This says it's Gremlins. This is not Gremlins, you know? Oh my and God. So, Gremlins, that when Gremlins came out and I was working at the Color Theater, nobody knew how to pronounce Gremlins. <laughs> I swear. Because, and it was also, you know, it was like a lot of the people were. English wasn't their first language, you know, it was a very okay. Well, that's of, fair. No, but it was a variety of ethnic, you know, but but still people come like, uh, one for girls, like <laughs> <laughs> nobody can pronounce it. I'd like, like a ticket no, for Greenland, yeah. 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 It's a that's a fun one to run because you know they get into the projection. Oh, yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. We would that's peek true. down, you know, like you, you watch everyone, everyone turns around. Yeah. And look at the projection <laughs> booth. Yeah, it's like er everybody it makes... does. It's and we ran it at our it's like, yeah. We put a little gremlin doll in the in the. Oh, cute! Oh, that's, <laughs> oh, that's, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's the great. original the original blob, of course, too, has a great uh, sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, theater yeah. scene. You know, that's I love it when the blob comes through the literally comes out of yeah. the projectionist uh, window. Yeah, yeah. maybe Kills she's them, done yeah. that. Put a big blob. There's a bunch of movies like that. I know because there was like a week. There was a week of programming at the Cine Family, and the projectionist was killed in every single movie. Oh, oh my God, that's great. That's for a week. funny. And I just finally went to Hager. I was like, are you trying to say something? <laughs> <laughs> what, is, what is going on with now, you? Now, th this is news to me, though. Right. I thought you were a big horror fan, but you do like zombie stuff. I love zombie movies. So that's, really? that's yeah, like yeah. your little niche that it's okay. I, I, yeah, I, I really dig zombie movies. I don't really dig like when they're just cutting people's heads off or just killing people, mm -hmm. you know, okay. um, like Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, like although, although. I, I literally have never seen. See, and, that, and I could tell. Yeah, because none of them. you don't see any of that stuff in that movie. Yeah, if you've seen yeah, zombie films, Texas Chainsaw, there's literally almost tame. no blood in that movie. Seriously. It's, it's, it's all suggested most, it's for the most, most part. Tense and harrowing films you'll see, but there's no yeah. actual gore. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I can't, can't do, do it. it. And yeah, right. they used to, I've seen a bunch. My sister loves it. She absolutely loves it. That's like her genre. She can't get enough of it. So she drugged me to a bunch of them just to torture <laughs> me, I guess. Like which ones? Oh, oh, oh I, I've seen all. And by the way, a good movie is a good movie. Like, 
Right. That right. first Friday the 13th, that's huh. just a really good movie. It is. So it's, it's a great movie. mystery, really. Yeah, it most, is. Yeah, most of the firsts yeah. are really good. Um, sure. You know, Friday the 13th, that first one's amazing. Nightmare on Elm Street, that first oh, one's amazing. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. a work of art, yeah. Well, I, I, that's a, a really, really strong movie. And But I'll tell you, like, the Blair Witch Project. That movie's terrified me. I was. I'm so out. happy to hear you week. say that. No, yeah, I was jumping in shadows for a week. Yeah. For a week, it bothered. Yeah. It really affected me yeah. for a week. Yeah. And, that makes um, me so happy. I, we love that movie <laughs> so yeah. much, and we defend it all the time. Yeah, yeah. I was driving on Hollywood Boulevard one time. Uh, Gary Wilson, you know him, right? Gary, Gary yes, yes, of course. Yeah. How's he doing, sweetheart? Sweet, it, he's great. It's his birthday today, actually. Oh, and so he, happy birthday, Gary! To... Retroactively, <laughs> yeah. No, it's still his birthday. Well, I'm not, not when I'm, we show, not, not no, when we I'm, play this. No, and I'm sure, <laughs> oh, okay. I'm sure so, he listens to the show all the time. He was, <laughs> he was driving me to go get my computer fixed, so I'm sitting in the and I, I had gone out, done some shows the night before, I was hungover. And so I'm in the passenger seat, kind of dozing and holding on to my computer. And uh, this is before self. I don't think Gary still doesn't have a cell phone. So he's like one of those. And uh, so he was like, I can't find this place. He's like, ask the car next to him if they know. So I just, I roll down the window. I look up. It's the girl. Heather? From Blair Witch Project. What? Wow. Heather Donahue or Donahue. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm, I'm going to tell her so so she sees so she's like you know giving me the like what's going you're still and alive I roll the window <laughs> back up and i look at karen i go we are really fucking lost man <laughs> that's really great lost I can't yeah how, how ironic oh, how ironic you're asking the star of blair, blair which yeah. directions because yeah, you're really. lost <laughs> yeah, well, did the, the next did person that. you asked for directions was a coroner <laughs> right. I just, I just I I rolled the window back up and I, it was just uh, that movie's terrifying. It's yeah, terrifying. Yeah, it's and, great. And great. How scary. And the first saw is also great. Yeah. You know, it's so, funny. Like, saw I mean, saw, great. saw I I like the what I like about saw is the uh the devices, the different yeah. ways that they're going to kill someone. I like those more than the actual the style Lots. of the, the style of the filmmaking though is sometimes annoying. Like it's not, I mean, I like it, but it's it has some issues. But I do think it's pretty. I like elements of it. It's super. Say. It's also super clever, and I can see why. But it, it looks so great, doesn't it? It's beautiful. Yeah. It looks yeah. great. The, the, the yeah. first one is good though. Yeah. They yeah. got yeah. into a thing yeah. where nobody, I think, personally, my opinion, I don't think anybody jumped the shark quicker than that guy. But the first yeah, one, yeah, I, yeah. I ran yeah. that at Gromit in the big wow. house. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was and a huge so, hit. Uh, <clears throat> I watched that, and it was fantastic. I mean, and it wasn't using the, like, you know what I mean? It had some puzzle things and figures. Yeah. No, the puzzle out. stuff is great, yeah. I think. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was yeah. really yeah. clever. But, yeah. yeah. The, uh, in the first one, but, yeah, I'll see about it. But, no, just, just the zombies for me. Just the zombie movies. I'm not... I do not like, I, I just get into movies so much. And then also just working in the booth, you're always alone in the dark. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you should have seen how traumatized I was when I had to run cats. That was just <laughs> oh. traumatized. Oh my God. I can't, I can't. You're talking about that. last year's smash hit. <laughs> I, I, I watched about five minutes of that one time and it was like, nope. I've had Car- that. Carrie's like Carrie's like, hey, let's watch this for laughs. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. you know. And it, I, I, look, <laughs> it, look, maybe I'm going to go out on a limb here, but in and in fairness, you know, when I saw it in a live theater with this Broadway cast, it was right. spectacular because people oh. were dressed up in costumes. It works so, better as a live show. I clearly, agree. Sure, yeah, but sure, when yeah. you try to make them look realistic in a yeah, film yeah. and it just, and no. in the scale Ugh. to me, it just, it's just awkward. Um, yeah. I'm trying to imagine the pitch session. This look, we're gonna make them really look like cats. It's like because well, they think what? everything has to be like you know just just because the MCU makes superheroes realistic in the real world doesn't mean everything has to be like that. You know what I mean? It's well, like, right. Yeah. yeah, just like you know, the Dark Knight was so successful, and then they were like, oh, they they were trying to make all the movies dark. Yeah, I guess, and it was like, no. no, 
it's he's literally called the Dark Knight. <laughs> but right, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's really he dark uses that a rule of thumb for all superhero <laughs> movies. Yeah. yeah right. Um, right. Gary, I'm curious, eliminates. you 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 had mentioned zombie movies. Do you have a favorite or a couple favorites? Oh do, yeah, yeah. Well, I, the one I'm uh, you recently recommending to people is one Matt had me watch, which I hadn't heard of, which is one cut of the dead, which I was just uh, oh, how yeah. great is that movie? It's fantastic. And, but my favorite, favorite list, is Dawn of the Dead. My favorite yeah, is Dawn of the Dead. <clears throat> and and which you have... Which version? Run. Which version? Oh, uh, actually, that's a great question. I prefer the European. Oh, the European, European cut. The European okay. Cut. Yeah, yeah. Now, I think Lair was about was trying to say, do you like the remake? The, the yes. remake of Dawn of the Dead. The remake was very solid. I thought he was talking about it was, three different it, versions. It was, not, it was pretty good for, for what it was. Yeah, it's got some. It's got some logic flaws all yeah. the way through, you know, but, but it's did you see it's a pretty effective. To a film, the opening is oh fantastic. Oh my god, one of the greatest yeah. openings to a movie ever. I think that's oh, why oh, maybe geez. maybe I'm not completely happy with it because that opening is so strong and never really lives up to that. You know, yeah, but, I, um, it, you know that I get that. That's an excellent point. It did, yeah. it did but uh, no, I did. I thought it was very good, and believe me, my arms were crossed because Dawn <laughs> right, of the right. Dead is my jam. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and you have Gary Anna. Yeah, yes, I do. A very special item of memorabilia. <laughs> <gasps> yeah. I actually have an original poster from Dawn of the Dead, but it's probably one that you guys haven't even seen before because most people think that the red and black one mm -hmm. is the original. That yes. is not the original. Because no. Dawn of the Dead opened up in B, what they called B houses, which was right. the rundown kind of sketch theaters like we were talking about. Right. Uh, he was mentioning, you know, like 42nd Street and all that. Yeah. He was those in drive it. It was a B film. Right. But it started doing so much business, the A houses complained. <laughs> and right. they were like, no, we want this movie. It, is, it was like their lines were crazy for it. Right. And so they redid the advertising campaign for that film. Wow. No, but I, I got original poster and it's green instead of red and wow. black. It's green. Wow. Super. Like Fucking rare. Super this rare. Oh, we've got to see rare. a picture of because this. Because the uh, the, yeah. the one is it, isn't yeah, the original totally. night the original night of the living dead poster has that green around the yeah. black and white images in the green kind of around. Yeah, and it's him coming like over yeah. there. It's that wow. same image. It's wow. bigger. The head of it is his head's bigger, and it's I call it. It's like zombie green wow. and black hey. and kind of it's. Super cool. Yeah, they read it. It's it's a it's a really rare poster because it didn't you need play to, in drive-ins for that long. Wow. You need to take oh. a picture of this for us. Okay, I will. Yeah, I will yeah, send you a sure. picture of that one because that one is definitely one cool. of the ones I have up and um framed. I have a huge poster collection. Oh I have, really? Nice. That's yeah, I have thousands and thousands of posters. Do you have them? Do you have them like too. framed and displayed, or do you see I actually have poster cases from a theaters I've worked at where they were oh, throwing yeah. them out or whatever. Oh, yeah, oh. right. Uh, so I change them out. Oh, that's great. Oh, I can, you are so I can nice. change them out. Like, that's, you know, that's if fantastic. It's, what a great idea. If it's yeah. Christmas, uh, I put yeah. up Elf and Rare Export. <laughs> nice. <laughs> whatever Christmas ones I have. Halloween, you know, I'm putting nice. up. Uh, but I, I have, from trading and from working in theaters since I was a kid, it was like one of the benefits I I have thousands of posters and some wow, of them wow. have a lot of money. That's but awesome. That one I traded a guy for. That that one was that one I tried. I've no no one's run Dawn of the Dead. They ju it just doesn't run in theaters. So huh, yeah, um, yeah. I'm we not saw sure I've heard rumors, but Eddie Webster and I. <laughs> I love this guy. Love we this guy. we 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 watched it at the Strand again. No, nice. I had never seen this movie and I'm waiting to see it for the first time. I read the book. <laughs> I read the novelization before I saw the film. And so we go to the strand and I'm all ready for Dawn of the Dead and it's glorious. And, you know, we're downtown yes. in this CD theater where it could actually happen here. You feel. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, what a great crowd, like, because people were yelling out stuff. But it was great. It made it. Right, it made right. it so much fun. Like <laughs> right before when uh, the zombie gets the screwdriver in the ear. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
like nine yeah, nine yeah. people shouted at the same time screwdriver near screwdriver near <laughs> <laughs> nice yeah it's uh, so good i hate that there's a pie fight in it though i mean it's so uh, you I know it's movie so i hard. uh yeah i i, I kind of went fight. with everything yeah i, too. Went, I, 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 I do I, the, my, my thing is the uh, they couldn't find real Hispanics in the beginning. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, they were in the wigs and the makeup. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Right. <laughs> they, they, they were in, in Philadelphia. Yeah, it was like nine Frito Banditos running out of that building. <laughs> but, you know, we've talked about this before, too, but it is interesting how even though the, the makeup in that movie, the effects are good, but it, you know how it's kind of the greenish tint on the makeup and the red yes. and the blood isn't quite yes. look right. It's but it somehow it works for the it works, because, yeah. it's, it's it like, does. because by the time you got to Day of the Dead, it was like super realistic gore. Like it looked like people were really being torn apart. Yeah. Like in yeah. Day of the Dead, it still works, but it's like it's it's kind of in its own world, though, you know, because yeah, it was the budget and it was the time they just couldn't really mean maybe make it look super realistic. I, yeah. I don't I don't but I don't mean that as a as a bad thing somehow it just works it does work yeah, but, though. but you know one know, of the things right? you know, mentioned yeah. one of the things you mentioned when you say the screwdriver in the ear or the helicopter yeah. or this or that yeah, so yeah. people getting yeah. shot or a shoulder being bit the thing that i loved about that movie is i hated when you went to a movie like uh, when i i first saw it at an art house it was a camera one uh, down in, in downtown san jose and the theater was packed and i thought oh are you gonna have a bunch of people yelling at the screen saying things and stuff right the, the thing about the movie is the movie has balls the movie is, is oh yeah graphic. yeah and it got yeah. to a point it where it grabs you it, by it the neck grabs, yeah. and it took a hold of that audience yeah you know right. and people oh, yeah. tried to like throw stuff at it and, and it's like the film just it just tears you apart and it's yeah, it's great yeah. and it's so yeah. graphic it's and just it's engrossing you like you get yeah it's engrossing know. and it's like it had the audience you know what i mean yeah, guys yeah. it's like you can't yeah. make fun oh, of it yeah it took them when and, when when that when the head explodes that's yeah. shocking but when the woman gets a bite out of her shoulder yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. that blew my mind and yeah that's it's a horrifying. great fun. you had never i think i had never great. seen a gore like no. a real-time gore effect like that and the, just the way it was presented was like holy shit it was almost moment, casual but at that yeah, moment yeah. it's like you didn't trust this movie it's like right, anything right. can happen yeah and and it's like well, well and and it's like the people everyone in the theater everyone was on edge and everyone was right. what's going to happen next and i loved it the film kind of took control over the audience yeah and yeah. that was a great it really does there is a lot of things that you should be mad about like the pie fight and then also you know the guy the helicopter his head is completely. <laughs> well, <flat>. yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. He's from like, Monster. Uh, you know, yeah. or no, he's from uh, he's from Metaluna. He's like he's like uh, ex Exeter. He has the high <laughs> Exeter. You knew, you knew what was going to happen. You knew what was going to happen, but you 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 were anticipating it. You know, yeah, it like, was okay. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. No, you I, still wait. Like I said, you go with like it, it's the spirit of the movie. I think yeah. that like that keeps you old. Like it's yeah. yeah, well, yeah it's there's also, just something magical about it. It, it really is. is. It's a perfect film, and you forgive a lot. Yes. None of the actors are recognizable. You've no, got, no. You've got just like, just like the locations. first movie. Yeah. yeah, right. The music is, you, you can't underestimate that music is it's really terrific. bizarre. Power. Bizarre, yeah. I know, but, but great. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's, yeah. it's it definitely it, it, I'm scared at the credits of that movie. The opening <laughs> credits <laughs> yeah. terrify me. That carpet, yeah. like yeah. <laughs> when you hear that music and you see the carpet on the wall, yeah. And you don't even know, like, is that meat fuck? inside someone's brain? Or like, what <laughs> what, what, what am I seeing? What is happening? Yeah. yeah. It's so, it, it throws you off from the very beginning. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 it shouldn't, though. I mean, it shouldn't. It really, I, I don't know. I can't explain it. It shouldn't work. But, man, it, it does. does. I well, it. I was watching, I got recently, it was the missing piece in my collection of DVDs because I had... Dawn and Day of the Dead on Blu-ray, and I needed, I wanted a, the definitive copy of Night. And right. so okay. I got this Criterion one that's beautiful. Right. Beautiful yeah, print, that one up too. Yeah. remastered, everything is gorgeous, and there's a ton of extra stuff. And I forget, I think it was maybe uh, Guillermo del Toro and uh, Rodriguez and Darabon, and they're all right. talking about the film, and somebody brought up the fact that because everything is almost done in a documentary style in every one of his films. Yeah. yeah. 
it's that same device that keeps you off kilter. If it was that same makeup scheme that you see in Dawn done in a very high gloss type movie, I don't think you would have bought it at all. Right, right. But because everything is a little dirty yeah, and yeah. you know this documentary style cinema verte. Yeah, really it's works. Its own, it's its own universe. You know, what I mean, right. it's kind of like its own skewered world. But yeah, no, it's it's great. I, I would run say night though, of the dead. But I've never run. I've run night and I've run day. I've never run dawn. Really, oh. I, that's like the one I think yeah. that's left. Day is I the one. Like, day is the one that I have been coming back to, and I like more each time I see it. Yeah, me too. Yeah. It's, it's it really is. good. It's really good. Some of the acting yeah. is, is over is over the way top. too over the top, and, and that's, that's that's my the, main that's, complaint. That's the me too. That's my biggest. But but some of the acting is good, and the effects are just you can't. The beat makeup them. is it's it's the most perfect. claustrophobic, downbeat, dark of the three films. Of and I, Bub, I think it's, Bub is yeah. a wonderful creation. Bub is, fantastic. Right. Bub, is, fantastic. Is, Bub is pretty freaking great. Yeah, I think that the ending of Night of the Living Dead is the best thing that he's ever shot. Though. Oh yeah, we, we oh, were recently yeah. talking about that actually. In one of our the ending of that yeah. film is, the yeah, it's, is fucking it's fantastic. Oh, <laughs> phenomenal. <clears throat> it's phenomenal! It's phenomenal! It's incredible! Yeah. Like I, I think that the movie is just okay. It really, that one really suffers from some bad acting. I think I, I kind the, of the I, somehow, is, Which one? Yeah, night. Night. Yeah, night. Somehow night. I go with it though. I don't. I. I mean, I think people maybe overact, but in that movie, I. I go with it. it doesn't, it's not. Whereas in day, it's like it sticks out. It's too much. To me. It's yeah, too but, much. But night, night, I, I buy. It. Night, I buy it. I do too. Really? Because do. it too. It doesn't seem like overacting to me or bad acting. It seems like regular people. Like yeah. they don't. That, yeah. They seem real to me as people. And so if they yeah. if they're yeah. not completely nuanced when it comes to their performances. It almost makes it better. Yeah, somehow I, yeah. I, I agree. I don't know why. For me. But yeah. But all right. All right. I mean, I, I, I got that. I do love that Criterion, too. I love that Criterion desk. Yeah. It's got some great, great extras. And then, the, uh, but, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I think I like Day better than Night. I really wow. do. Interesting. Wow. I, I Interesting. Okay. I, I really do. I, <laughs> I, I, I like Day. But my favorite, without question, I think most people prefer Dawn. Probably I mean, a lot do, yeah. I mean, it's I definitely think up Dawn there. and Knight yeah. get the most. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, they do. Sure. Somebody and, brought up, and I think it was also in one of these extras, that if you're really going to do a trilogy that feels like it belongs in the same universe, he says what I'm trying to remember who said this, but it, that you would put the remake of Knight as the first movie. Huh. Oh. It's in color. Yeah. And it feels like it's part of that trilogy whereas night feels like it's a film all in its own like it's mm-hmm. it's a yes That's because the first of all the zombies behave differently in night and Absolutely. you know right yeah. right larry and i have been arguing for centuries about the fast <laughs> and slow zombie and he doesn't like oh. fast zombies but there are fast zombies in night okay well, they, sure. they okay. run there's a the scariest first zombie is a yeah. running zombie who right. uses yeah. tools and yeah. Yeah, um, right. and the little girl um, Cooper's daughter uh, she right. uses the the spade right or, that's yeah. true yeah you're right I I prefer the slow zombie only because it makes sense to me yeah <laughs> it I can makes see that. sense yes Why? it does they don't it exist well we're, right I, I we found that out this is the work apocalypse ever <laughs> that we're going through no zombies yeah. or nothing we found, yeah right if we there's not zombies now right but i would would, you, like, would you, like, if we don't know necessarily what is reanimating these right. creatures then couldn't something be filling the body with something that can make it run as long as the muscles Absolutely. are still there now if yeah. it's deteriorated then it can't yeah. run well also, it seems like every time they do it, they're super fast. It's like, could this person run that fast? Like, it feels like they can run faster. Well, they they would be able to run faster because they're not burdened with getting tired. Okay. Or sure. having their muscles cramp because or it's all no just, yeah, yeah, they have, yeah. they're being taken <laughs> over by a parasite or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Right. That's reanimating okay. them. So they don't have to, they're not going to get tired. And that's what's that, frightening yeah, to me. I, I always just felt the slow ones made more sense. It feels to me right that if you would reanimate a dead body, 
that that it would come back and it would have a little bit of trouble. Like it would, it, it would almost you. take its effort to move its arm and but, to kind but, of like that. You're you on can my all, you, team. You can okay, but wait a minute. Look at, hey, but, hey yeah, guys. But okay. wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. explained. You've gone off. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. I have to point this out, though, is that I like that, too. My view is why can't we have both? Why can't we enjoy both? Enjoy both. Right. I enjoy both. Because even I, like, honestly, even, I really yeah. think World War Z is very good. I think I'm one. Okay. Of the- All right. No. <laughs> I, I'm leaving. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> is the interview over, guys? guys? <laughs> so did it, did any of you when you worked the at the? Huh? Go ahead. The book is brilliant. I love the book. The book is brilliant, and I I just I hated it when I first saw it because I really wanted the book, which right. is brilliant. And then it was like, oh, they just bought it for the, the title, title. Yeah, bought it yeah. for the, and, the, and the big so, stars. so they could have the cool title. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> once you get past that, that it has nothing to do with the book and it's not that story at all. Uh, it's a pretty damn good zombie movie, I thought. I might revisit it, but at the time, nah, nah. not my thing. I, I was the same way. <laughs> I watched it and I was like, oh, I, I was super disappointed because I was looking forward to it. Because I just love the book so much. It's so right, it's like right. it's brilliant. And uh it was super disappointing. But then one day I just I watched it again and I was like, well, if you forget all that, it's and just accept it for what it is. It's a real good zombie movie, actually. Okay. Okay. You know? Okay, but, so and, Train sorry. to Basan, I think oh, is so good. That, those are the best fast zombies ever. Yeah, they're scary. Uh, they're, too. They're, 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 that one is it, it's yeah it's it's pretty good yeah. I, and Larry, I, you have seen this, right? Yes. And you did enjoy it, right? I did. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to know what James thinks. James, it's what do you my, think? It's on my queue. I have yet to see it. Oh, buddy, what are you? What are you, what are you doing? No. Are, are you, you watching, watching Star Trek? That's exactly what I'm doing. I'm, well, I have to watch Star Trek first. Get what are you nice. watching right I'd now? I'd say, no, not right now. I'd say stop watching classic Star Trek and check out this film, Train to Busan. Train to Busan. Bring the wife in, you know, mm-hmm. watch it together. Have what do you think? Wine. Have you ever seen the classic <laughs> Star Trek? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> well. Yeah, you know. <laughs> it's a long story. Here, uh, Anna, it's okay, the, no, no, the no, trouble no, with no, Gonus. Oh. <laughs> I'm talking here. You know, some things yeah, I never I do, live down, you know. I do want to – there there are three celebrity-driven quick stories at the Culver Theater that I have to tell you, though. Go. Oh, please. please. Awesome. Okay. This awesome. one I may, I may have briefly said, but one night when I was working in the theater, I was working at the concession stand, and it was a pretty busy night, and I don't know what movies you're playing, but a couple comes in. There's this guy and this gorgeous blonde, and I'm getting her her drink or whatever, and I'm looking at her, and I just go – you know, you look an awful lot like the actress Sybil Danning. Oh. And she goes, well, thank you, honey. I am Sybil Danning. And, <gasps> ah. and it's just like, you know, I'm the, I'm the pimple-faced kid behind the concession stand. Nobody <laughs> knew who she was, you know. And and she took it out of her purse. She had a little black and white photo that she signed for me and gave it to me. Oh, and I have it to no. this day. Wow. And she, she, oh. signed it yeah. to my, she signed it to my darling Sean. May all your dreams come true. Love you, Sybil. Oh, that's yeah. sweet. Yeah. But but then nice. I was make I made such a big deal like oh my god, Sybil Danny. But as I said, there were cops that worked there because for security. One cop knew who she was because it was literally that same month or the month before she did a pictorial in Playboy. Oh mm. and, no! And so and I go yes, it's Sybil Danny. He goes to his car and brings back the issue. And, and Sybil came back to like the back <laughs> office with all these guys around. She signed her pictorial. Oh, like, wow. she's the best. And of course, and she, of course, this is this is before cell phones. You know, I didn't sure. take a picture. Like, sure. but that was an amazing moment. Another That's very great. St- another very strange moment was, uh, I don't know why he was there, but I don't know how I found out who this guy was. But Jim Wynerski, the director, oh, filmmaker, yeah, yeah. who makes you yeah. know Chopping Mall and Return of the yeah. Swamp Thing. Uh huh. He was a busy filmmaker in the early '80s, working for New World for Roger Corman. <laughs> Somehow I got to talking to him. I, I found out who he was, and he brought with him. He he went to his car and brought back a bunch of vinyl records of the soundtrack to Shogun Assassin. 
Oh my God. <laughs> because if you remember, Shogun Assassin was a re release of Lone Wolf and Cub. Yes. That kind of like combined a couple of those movies. And they re released it with like dubbing and narration and with like this totally like electronic music score. And so this was the vinyl release that Jim Marnerski had in his car. I was because he's working in New Orleans. <laughs> That's I guess he incredible. Had, and he <laughs> gave one to me. So I had this soundtrack to nice. Shogun Assassin. Good and the people. other. The other the other celebrity encounter I had was I was just working in the theater and a limbo pulls up in front of the theater and Fred Berry gets out rerun from what's happening. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh. And he was just very excited. He's like, hey, guys, I'm not here to see me. I just really want some fresh movie popcorn. So he went in and bought some popcorn, went back in his limo and drove away. No way. <laughs> nice. So it was like. Classic just some friend. random weird thing. Yeah. Wow. So anyway, those are my three celebrity driven stories from working at the Culver Theater. Oh, oh that's oh. cool, Sean. I've got yeah. my favorite. We were shot. I wish I could remember the name of the movie, but uh Juliet Binoche was one yeah. of the stuff. Yeah. Now, usually this was at Arclight, and they would just put them in the booth with us. So people wouldn't bother them and oh, right. you know, they kind of used it as a greener. So she's there. She's wearing a very smart black and white pantsuit. That's important to the story. <laughs> so we're doing the screening. And usually when you do a big screening like that, they'll have five or six guys. You have studio reps. You have projectionists. You have like an engineer. You have your Dolby. Your sound. No matter what happens, it, it will be fixed. Like they, so they have right, right. five or six guys. And they're just sitting around. Uh, the the spy guy around me and uh she's walking around the booth so i'm running the other shows you know because they have a team particularly hired for this screening Mm -hmm. and so i do the thing i always do which was just like hey if you need anything just let me know we'll be able to take care of it if you have any questions or anything she's like thank you very much and then she walks away she's just doing what everybody does she's looking at the different things in the booth Mm-hmm. And the um, the guys, the studio screening guys, he's like, man, that security guard is hot. Because <laughs> <laughs> of the black outfit? That's great. Yeah, yeah. Uh... Very smart black and white pantsuit, which is what the security usually wore. <laughs> that, That's great. Like, do, you, do you mean Academy Award winner, Juliet <laughs> Binoche? Your <laughs> <laughs> side job. Like, and he's like, who? <laughs> oh, <laughs> right, right. Academy yeah. Award winner. Yeah, no. Uh-uh. Juliet Binoche. And, That's funny. And then I point out the port glass to the screen. See, she's up there real big. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't see her. <laughs> they all start Googling her. <laughs> yeah, right, right. No idea. I, I just, oh. But so you know how, like, was- if Pam Anderson had learned acting and <laughs> was born in another country, Right, <laughs> but trying to find just, some point of reference here. Right. The uh, the other one that I've always enjoyed telling involving a star. I was actually outside of the booth, but uh, we were running AFI, that the big film festival, mm-hmm. and the they were playing the proposition, and I was dying to see it. I had heard a lot about it. Nick Cave wrote it. Uh, it was just I love a good western. So I'm in the booth, I'm working the day shift, and I'm like, I asked the guy, the the lady, I'm sorry, running it, Aaron, if if I can watch the proposition. She goes like, yeah, hang out. And uh, I don't think that they're going to show up because they always have good seats for the executives. Mm-hmm. Sure enough, they don't show up. I had clocked off, hung out in the booth there with the gang. And then she gets me in, I go and I sit there and I'm just like, chilling and these great seats that are the bmw executive seats because they're the sponsors <laughs> i'm like oh this is fantastic and you kind of hear like that murmur go through the crowd and i look and it's Charlize theron and oh. her boyfriend at the time coming in and i was like oh wow it's Charlize theron who by the way is one of the most beautiful women i've ever seen up close like hmm. we all live in la i think right yeah. a lot of times you will see these people and it is disappointing 
<laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, the camera loves them or it's lighting and makeup. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> she is stunning. Mm. And she comes in, I'm looking in the seat next to me is it's empty. And I'm like, oh no. Sure enough. She comes up, same row, M. I'm M22. She sits right next to me in M21. So I'm sitting there. It's packed. Theater's packed. And I've got my hoodie on. And it's sold out. It's just incredibly packed. So I know once the movie starts and we've been in there a while, it's gonna. I'm going to get hot. And so I'm like, well, I'm going to take my hoodie off now. Because I don't want to do it in the dark and like accidentally put my elbow into one of the world's <laughs> biggest movie stars. <laughs> like I just see, it. and so I'm like, no, 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 I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that. So I, before the movie, I just take off my hoodie, and my shirt sticks to the inside of my hoodie. Yeah. <laughs> so I get in the theater. And I have taken my top off. <laughs> <laughs> wow. In front so you, of Charlie's so you, fl- you flashed Charlie's theory. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes, I did, sir. And does she notice? <laughs> Is she paying attention? <laughs> she, she did not notice. The guy behind me did. <laughs> but also, I'm just like, because I get it back on real quick. And I'm just, I'm mortified. I'm like, I cannot believe that I just did that. And I look down because I'm sure you guys have been there. You know, the employees always stand against the wall. Yeah. And, I yeah, look right. over and they are all just looking at me with their <laughs> hands like, what have you done? <laughs> so, I was hoping saw. And then right then the guy behind me just leans forward and he goes, twins. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what he meant. I still, I have no idea. But whenever I tell the story, that always gets a laugh. I have no idea. I what think I know what it means. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. What a great story. I, Something about well, Mary moment. Yeah. Oh, God. And, and of what, course that? it would happen right then. It probably has never happened to you before. Not, no, no that, that, I'll tell you it hasn't happened since then because I'm very aware. Yeah, because you, you uh, <laughs> duct tape it down now, right? Just in case. <laughs> Right. Not one time in front of an A-list start will not. But yeah, you know how that is. Like you, you when you take off a yeah, yes, a yeah, of course. I, I, oh, it's yeah. it's mortifying. I have, the other I have, one, I have, the other two. one is when I was working at Grommens. I was standing out front just because you know you can't really leave the booth once you start that. So in between the show, we'll get everything ready and usually right. go down. And I would hang it out front just to get some fresh air and. You know, I mean, booths are dark, no windows. Like, yeah. I mean, so I with out front, and you guys know how they have like the characters are dressed up, like yes. uh, out yeah. in front. Right. Hollywood We're Boulevard. out there just. Yeah, chilling. but these are not these are not licenses. They're just like yeah, you know, uh, work actors. Yeah, yeah, make, yeah. You know, <clears throat> Hey, let me put on a Spider Man outfit. I'll go out there and try making yeah. a few bucks. I, I found <laughs> this. I found this Big Bird costume in a dumpster. <laughs> Yeah. I'm going to turn it into money. <laughs> yeah, right. that is exactly what's going on. And so we're out there and I'm just waiting and Batman and Superman are out there and Batman was kind of a shady guy. <laughs> and he took his camera and put it underneath Marilyn Monroe's skirt and took a picture. No. So what? of course Superman gets very angry at this. Yes. Of course. And heated heated words were exchanged. And they got into a fight. They oh. actually started fighting each other. A real fight? Batman and Superman oh are full on street fight. Oh my god. Like, <laughs> oh my oh my god. god. And I take out my phone and I'm like, who am I gonna call? <laughs> to tell them that Batman and Superman. Are yeah. <laughs> Everyone you know. <laughs> now I think. Wow. I, I think the guy that you're talking about, his name was Christopher Dennis. Is that he, the guy who yeah. died recently? He, yeah, he mm-hmm. looked. Yeah, yeah, said, he looked just like Christopher Reeve for years, and he made his living dressing up as Superman, and he had a pretty good costume. He looked pretty right. good. But what happened is over the years. You know, he he kind of got into some 
the bad crowd and, and he got into some drugs and it's, it's really tragic. It's really yeah, yeah. Yeah. It made, it yeah. made national news. Yeah, um, yeah. He was such a handsome guy and basically drugs basically took over his, his life, but yeah. he was the one who he, he was one of these guys. He really felt like he was Superman. He, he had met Christopher Reeve. Christopher Reeve had autographed a bunch of things. He had a massive Superman collection mm-hmm. and eventually sold <laughs> it all to, to get money for drugs, which is really a shame, but wow. He tried to be like um, not necessarily the police officer of that Hollywood Boulevard area, but he he tried to keep people on because he was Superman. But like yeah, a role model. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He really was one of the better ones too. He was like, he I did mean, that for like nearly twenty years. Wow, it's a heart, it's a heartbreaking thing how that ended. It really yeah. is. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It, it did not. It ended very poorly. And he was he was great out there. He was he was the one that would always. But I I thought what was really funny. It's some of the writers, because Jimmy Kimmel uh, records across the street. Right. Yes. And some of his, his writers, they used to always come and watch movies at, at Grauman's. Oh, and cool. they were there. So he actually talked about it on the show that night. And I think they even like showed some footage of, of, the of fight? that. Wow. I thought it was wow. hysterical. When I worked for Playboy, I did a bunch of like man on the street things. We take a playmate, ask a bunch of people questions and stuff, and uh, he'd be out there. And there were times when I I wanted to say, "Hey, you want to do another interview?" And he really didn't want to do it because he was Superman and this was Playboy. He wanted to kind of keep his distance. So we never we never actually got to do an interview with him. Oh, uh, uh, that is too bad. He was uh, yeah, he was he was a really nice guy. He really was a nice guy and defended Marilyn Monroe. I always thought nice. that was funny though. I was just looking at my phone and I felt so alone. <laughs> yeah. Probably right, right. more probably more than George Reeves would have done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Right. James. George. I, uh, I have a couple of quick celebrity encounters uh, in theaters. Nice. Uh, one of them, uh, I was at the opening night, I think it was the midnight show of Poltergeist 2 in Times Square. Wow. And uh, I ended up sitting next to Penn Jillette. Oh, really? <laughs> and after the movie, he turned to his friend and said, I've seen better film on my teeth. <laughs> so I just remember that, you know. And then uh, right. years, years later, I'm in L.A., and it, this was actually at the silent movie theater where CineFamily is, and they were uh, premiering a movie that my friend produced, which was the sequel to Birdemic. Birdemic oh, 2. Yes, <laughs> right, yeah. Oh, and, Birdemic, what a masterpiece. <laughs> And, and, not. And, and Cine, but Cine Family sort of championed the first movie, right? Absolutely. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. It, well, yeah, it became like the hit thing to see this super bad movie, right? right. In the in it, the in the booth, I used to have like they their swag was they gave people a birdemic coat hanger. Yeah, because they fought <laughs> off the, the birds with coat hangers. Right? Yeah, because right. they fought off the birds <laughs> with coat hangers. So I mean, I thought it was hilarious. It was. That's one of funny. The pieces of swag. That's a good idea. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought it was hilarious. So yeah. The, I, I, yeah. What was the sequel though? Uh, to Birdemic well, Two. Birdemic Two, and uh, I think it was called Birdemic Two: The Resurrection or something. <laughs> something like and, that. Yeah. And the, the, the the big challenge was to make it as bad as the first one, but not right. to be not to be self consciously. You bad. can't do that. No, you, you can't. Need to be as innocently bad. It was yes, like no, it doesn't work. Exactly. You could not um, do uh, the room two. Right. No, right. No. Right. It was a tough tough thing to pull off, but you know, the energy was was high because it was a premiere. And there was a little bit of a red carpet. And I, I was in there because, you know, my friend had produced the thing. And a friend of the director's had approached me. And I've been told that I resemble Oliver Stone. And I've been told okay. this often. And I think, I think it's true. It's sort of like a, a younger, maybe Oliver Stone. Right. But th- this guy thought I was Oliver Stone. <clears throat> so he walks he walks up to me so shyly and so trepidatiously. <laughs> and I I knew what it felt like for a moment <laughs> to be a recognized right. celebrity. So but, that's yeah, a but, celebrity encounter where I was actually the celebrity. But, ja- but James, you're but James, you're a monster <laughs> right now. You must get that all the time. Well, of course. Well, now, <laughs> yeah, yeah, now. Right. All, all of us. Yeah, now, all of us of course. get that yeah. constantly. Yeah. 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 You can't go to Denny's. The mobs, yes, yeah, like <laughs> Beatlemania. Right. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah it was a lot of fun. I Did you? So, so what? Wait a minute. So, what happened? Did you ever try to tell this guy that you weren't Oliver Stone, or did you just go with it? 
No, I, I told him, I told him like right away that I wasn't him, but, but it was sort of tempting to kind of play along for a minute. <laughs> yeah. Like, right. Well, Dave, you like, know, you go, yeah, sure. Word. Fucker. <laughs> I once like did a I, I once did a comedy gig with a comic friend of mine named Ray Booker, and we got hired to do this private party. And the idea was we had to tell everyone that we were Olympic skeet shooters, <laughs> and wow. the whole and hang out with everybody during the whole party and pretend that we're Olympic skeet shooters. That's and then hilarious. at the end, we tell everyone that we're not, and then we do a set. <laughs> And <laughs> so the <laughs> whole party, good. people are trying, and there's always a couple of wise guys, you know, who are onto us. Oh, really? So right, what, right. Uh, what gauge uh, shotgun do you, you know? I don't know. What, what just, kind of skin do you yeah. use? Uh, uh, the brown ones. That, that's the gun I use. You know those brown ones? There's yeah. The pole, pole, pole. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, that's hysterical. That's a great story. I think next time that happens, you really should go with it. Yeah, and just right, run right. with it and see I where agree. see where the night takes you. <laughs> no, one night, one night I was on my bicycle at night in Santa Monica, riding, you know, maybe 15, 20 miles an hour with a helmet on. And I pass a guy in the corner and he goes, Oliver Stone. <laughs> Jesus. Wow. Okay. That's hilarious. That's great. You, should, you just yell yeah. back at the guy something mean and nasty. And then I got back there was a second Stone gunman. Oh, no, you should just start. You should just start talking about the hand a lot, and just saying how it was like your your greatest movie. Oh, <laughs> yeah. no, Michael Caine, he owes me money. Yeah. yeah. Um, I can't. What, believe Larry. Larry. For the <laughs> yeah, Larry, do you got any yeah. uh, celebrity encounters at the theater? Nothing like what you guys said. The the biggest celebrities that came into the theater that I recall in San Jose were in 1982. Apple Computer bought the entire theater at Century 24 to show the film. Well, we were showing it, Tron, uh-huh. and uh, Steve Jobs came. Oh, really? Oh, wow. And I didn't I didn't have like an interaction or anything. Uh, you and saw then him. the other. That's yeah, cool. and then the other celebrity, which was kind of cool, if if you were a big football fan. In the 80s, the big football team were the San Francisco 49ers. And it just so happened. Not that, familiar. Yeah, I didn't think you were. <laughs> Ronnie Lott, who was like one of their star defensive players, came into the theater. Oh. And all and it is just after they had won the Super Bowl. And we all the guys were flipping out. And there was this one gal who worked at the theater. She was in the box office. She came out and we said, Oh my God, that's Ronnie Lott. And he was, he was with, I guess his girlfriend or they were over at looking at the posters or something. And she goes, well, why don't you guys go and say, say hi to him? Oh no, no, we don't want to go. And she goes, Oh, you guys. And she walks on over and she goes, excuse me, sir. Are you Ronnie Lott? He turns around and goes, well, yes, yes, I am. And she goes, thank you. Turned around and walked away. <laughs> that's funny. That's great. Yeah. So yeah. those are the only two. Car- Carrie and I, we went to one of her co-workers was getting married, and at the wedding was Julie Andrews. Wow. He was somehow oh, wow. a friend of the family. That's that's amazing. So, so we're at the reception and we're with a group of people. And people are like, well, you know, should we go up and talk to her? Like, no, no, really, no. (laughs) Of all places, no. But of course, you know, there was one of them who had a couple drinks. He goes up and starts talking to her. And I don't know if it was accidental, but it seemed like she looked toward our way and kind of went. (sighs) (laughs) Right, right. Like that's so. Uh, come well, on, man! At a wedding. The, I mean, on, look on the yeah. flip side. I mean, you know, you have to get used to that. I mean, like, like she star, was a star she, her, of and, her magnitude. You know, she was. Po- <laughs> of yeah. course, she was nothing but polite. Yeah, she's also. But I'm sure she would have player. rather <laughs> not had that happen. Yeah. Yeah. Enjoyed the wedding. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. The wedding, uh, you know, yeah. enjoy the wedding, which totally does make sense. I. I mean, you're right. It's like. There's a time I mean, we all you see them sure all yeah. the time like every day yeah. it's just kind of the deal you don't really want to I don't want to be that guy right. I, I just don't, I don't I, I don't want it that way yeah 
We all have our George Lucas stories, but uh, yes, we do. I was at some party and I walked up to him and said, are you George Lucas? And he said, yes, I am. And then I, oh, wow, I'm a big fan. And then there was a, a beat of, oh, I'm standing here way too long, not saying anything. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, like, and then I gradually know. shrunk to about an inch and walked away. But you Look, don't, Pete, you don't, you don't know, like, because you, you worry that you're going to, like, Matt, just last year, Gene and I went to see the movie Greed, the new movie that Steve Coogan is starring. Oh. And Steve Coogan was there. He did a QA. And that's really? the big reason we went. And, you know, I mean, Steve Coogan, man. And afterwards, you know, it was just at the Arc Light in Hollywood. And we were just heading heading out, and he was standing right there with just a couple guys. And I wanted to, but I, I didn't want to. I didn't say anything. I just I, I was I literally know. five feet from him. I, I, get I don't it. know. Maybe he would have been perfectly cool, but I didn't want. But what Steve, if what if he wasn't? I yeah, I didn't want Steve Coogan to even mad at <laughs> no, me for no, any no. reason. No. Like I, I I even even just to say hi. I I I, I kind of wanted to, but man, but I mean that's no. that's the kind of feeling like I mean I had a, Coogan, I had a moment. I had a moment like that with Robert Altman and this was about a month before oh, wow. he died. And I got to meet him at a thing and I, you know, I, t- I told him, uh, you know, how big of a fan I was and he just made me feel like an inch. Yeah, oh, I, no. know. I know. No. I know. But, 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 but then I read a book about him in oral history where all these different people were, were saying what a dick he was to people. Really? Yeah, 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 those are stories I heard. Yeah. 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 The, the yeah. Look for, for yeah. listeners, if you're not familiar, we did a great with Robert show Altman? called. Oh, <laughs> We did a great show called Celebrity Encounters where we go over a lot of the celebrities that we've met over the years and the good, the bad, and the ugly. Right, yeah. And uh, it, it will be a great episode to check out to get more more detail. Yeah. You guys were talking about the room. I actually talked with Tommy Wise. I ran. He's probably the, pretty the, fun, yeah. He's a weird dude. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> and, I'm, honestly. A lot of people don't realize that I, the premiere of that was at Arclight. Oh, I did wow. not know this, no. And uh, yeah, I ended up running that. Wow. For them. He was very nice, <laughs> though. But it, it, it's 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 very much one of these things where yeah. English is not the first language. Right. So <laughs> you know, it, it was. Uh, I felt communication was. I was like, wow. I wait. This guy in the movie. He wrote the movie. <laughs> Well, that's and then you watch the movie. And, and then I watch the movie. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> All right. we I, I I feel so blessed that I got to see the room when he was still showing up. Right, right. And introducing oh, yeah. it, and then that's he would cool. give away swag and carry one a room cap. No way. <laughs> no way. Yeah, that's yeah. I'm so jealous, oh, but. Uh, yeah, he but, got, well, uh, nowhere is showing anything anymore. But yeah, he used to show up at the uh, the Sunset Five there, right? Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, that's yeah. where we saw yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was a, he was super sweet. He was super sweet. You know, like I, I, it was it was a pleasure to talk with him. But we did not know what to expect, and no one knew <laughs> right. that movie. Right, right. And so we were we were baffled. We were baffled by the room. We kept like grabbing people. Come on, come on, watch the. Is this? <laughs> yeah. Is, what is this wait, anomaly? I had, I, I had people from an acting class that I was in come and tell me about this. We saw this movie today, and they were grabbing people off the street to try to get them to come in and see this movie. So we went in and saw it, and it's like nothing we've ever seen. Yeah, and they yeah. couldn't describe it to me, and they had the yeah, program. Yeah. Because yeah, I guess in the early days he was giving out this promotional stuff, and they tried to explain it to me. And then so a few weeks later we went and saw it, and it's it, it's it's hard to describe it, but it, it is. It really is. It really I is. would I would say though that it's like Plan Nine, it's like Showgirls in a way when, of when it's that, with a big audience too. Well, you know, right, but it, but it's yeah. it, it's like Birdemic in the sense of that you couldn't purposely make. A movie this perfectly right. bad, right? From but for yeah, from for, that many directions, right? To make for, this listen, thing. for listeners, if you're not familiar with it, there was a great film made in 2017 called yes. The Disaster Artist, which mm. basically explains. I mean, you guys are explaining it, it's this really bad film you can't really understand. 
if you see the film The Disaster Artist, it explains the story about these guys and how they came about making this film. This film was supp not supposed to be a bad film. They were trying to make something good, and it turns out to be so incredibly bad. The irony is – you know, I, I don't know about Birdemic, but typically a bad film doesn't make money. But this film, because True. it was right, so yeah. bad, it's and so because it's so mesmerizingly it, bad, it it's made just... went on to make millions and millions of dollars. And then, right. of course, to sign these these deals to go on and make the disaster artist, that's like another batch of films. So, sure. you know, actually, he's done okay. I'm, oh, he's done great. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. And Disaster yeah. Artist is, I think, a brilliant it, movie. It I think it's really great. Yeah. It is a great. I movie. love that movie. The the. Yeah. The guys in the film are just uh, uh, fantastic. Yeah, James Franco is James Franco brings him to life. Yeah, yeah. That booth uh, at the Sunset Five, it was like an apartment. There was like a a guy living up there. <laughs> the projectionist wow. lived up there because he, he he would come in from so far away. He like lived in Palm Springs or something. What? So when wow. I went up to the booth there one time to get some trailers or something from it. And I had to be in the, like a kitchen and a cat. He's like watching TV. <laughs> <laughs> He's bad Ronald. Wow. What? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> like, yeah, he was like, he would live up there. He would work four days and get all of his hours then. And then he would go back home for like okay. Wow. That so, makes sense. Like, yeah, he had, yeah. He had an apartment <clears throat> up there. Which hey, Garana, can I ask you a question? You said that you've worked at uh, the Grauman's Chinese Theater. Oh, yeah. And to me, that's one of the greatest theaters. And I, I remember yeah. seeing films there, you know, back in 2000 stuff. But then they decided to close the theater and do some renovation. And basically yeah. what they did is they dug this deep ditch and made it more like a stadium uh, yeah. theater seating. And at first I was really upset because I thought to myself, this is where Clark Gable and Spencer Tracy, they would walk down this red carpet to see th uh, films here for premieres. Yeah. And now they're Absolutely. destroying it. But I, when I went in the theater, when it had just opened, I thought it was just stunning. What's it like to, to project films in, in that new theater now? Well, it was, um, they redid the booth mm -hmm. and it's like a spaceship because it's, it's mm -hmm. IMAX now. Yeah. You know, uh -huh. in 70. And um, it is, I mean, it's incredible. It was a, it is a historic building. And um, that is definitely not lost on you um, because it, it is like incredibly beautiful. I mean, right. it's an incredibly beautiful. And when off of the booth, there used to be four little seats that is all that's left from Sid Grauman used to have a private balcony up there where he had 20 seats for his wow. guests. Wow. wow. And there was like four Just of imagine who sat in those seats. Right? Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. All the time. We would have people all the time, you know, Tom Cruise and, and Leonardo DiCaprio. People would, they would bring famous people up because it's actually in the theater. Right. But you were, they couldn't see, people couldn't see you. Yeah. Right. And uh, yeah. I watched Equestered. a million million films up there my friends used to love it because they would come when i was working and if nobody was in there they would just watch and you're getting the good sound the big screen right everything all the benefits wow. of being at the theater but you're not surrounded by somebody like clipping their toenails or something <laughs> <laughs> it's really, really beautiful theater and cool. it, it definitely needed to be redone but in fairness i'm sure so for me, that that had yeah. no rake to it, oh, man, if I got a bad seat, I literally, I couldn't see the screen at all. Right. You know? yeah, yeah. Now it's now it's completely different. Now right. you, oh, every yeah. seat yeah. is like a great seat. I what love I loved it. about it, even though re they renovated it, still the interior, it still has so many elements yeah. of classic glory days mm -hmm. of Hollywood. And yes. so I, I thought to myself, I, I still love going to that theater because I do feel like I still get a beautiful big screen, a nice, comfortable seat, but there's still the history of the yes. theater. Is still there. Well, I wish that there was more of those left. I hate yeah, that it's yeah. only the Egyptian, the Cinerama Dome, and then, uh, uh, of course, the Disney one. El Capitan. As, 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 the El Cap is, I also think it's beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful theater. What's really cool when I worked there is we used to like go up on the, we would go up onto the roof of the Chinese and like, you know, throw stuff at the tourists. <laughs> and, oh. uh, 
but it was really incredible to be like behind the screen there. Mm -hmm. You know, know, like all the early Oscars all took place there and nobody gets to see it. Yeah. Because they they can't remove the screen right. is like on where the stage was, and I would be curious now that they've redone it if they removed all that. I hope they didn't. Yeah, I yeah. hope they didn't. You know, but it was like an old. It was a theater, you know. Yeah. So it's got. I mean, in back there, there's you know um, dressing rooms and stuff wow. like that. It's it's, mm. it's huge back there too. Right. Like I mean, I, I, and. I hope that all that just didn't get well at the, at the El Capi yeah, at the El yeah. Capitan. It is a s- stage and screen, and because I've taken yeah. my daughter there on many occasions, and what's yeah. so fun is Disney because it's the big money of Disney. They did that theater right. It still has so all the great, great glorious yeah. golden <clears throat> age of Hollywood, but the stage is still there. So what they do sometimes is they'll actually do a show. They will perform a show before the actual screen comes down and and shows right, right. the movie. Those are terrific too. I love I love going uh and seeing the the shows that they they put on. Um I don't think yeah. they do them during the week anymore, but they do them on the weekend. It's wonderful. Yeah. It's wonderful. And that, and that's a really I know the guy who runs over there. That's a, a really complicated gig because the projectionist is doing all that. Right. He's doing the curtains, mm-hmm. yeah. he's doing the they have a very complex, very complex setup there. You know, it's not like, well, I mean, when we would run stuff at the dome sometimes, you know, we would run three strip cinerama. So oh, wow. uh, that was, uh, I, I mean, that's a big operation. That takes five people oh, to yeah. do that. Wow. And projectionists to do that. And so there would be a lot of us up there. And I hate that a lot of these stories are getting lost because like when yeah. I, I remember running that and I mean, the other guys are like, they're in their eighties and nineties, some of them. <laughs> wow. And they would be, you'd be like waiting and they'd go, come here, come here, come here. They're like, see that, see that buffalo right there? Okay, he's gonna shoot it. They really shot that buffalo. Oh, <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. I'm like, yeah. what? And he goes, yeah. <laughs> they wow. actually, he goes, you'll never see this movie with the no animals were harmed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <right. laughs> During wow. and I was just like, but it was fascinating like that because yeah. they would just kind of they they go, come here, come here, come here. See that, see that cactus. They blow torch the needles off of it, and it's six hundred years old. They took a blow torch, blow torch the needles, and that stunt man just jumps into it, destroyed a six hundred year old cactus. Wow. They had so many great stories wow. about like every time you would run with them, and they got the main guy that does it. They got him to do the commentary track for the film because I, I, it was amazing. The knowledge that he had right. about this movie, he had talked to people and I mean, his whole life he had been learning about this movie, but they could barely use anything on the commentary because he was drunk. <laughs> yeah. hey, stop. You, you can't say that he killed a Buffalo. It's like, <laughs> right. oh, that'll upset people. Wow. It's like, but he killed the buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> These days, you'd probably be able to do that. People are, I think, a little, gun. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's funny. You were guys were talking about the stages and doing a presentation before the movie of some sort of yeah, some sort of live presentation. And my mom would tell me these stories about when she used to go to the movies. You know, in the forties, she said that, for example, she went to see a Danny Kaye movie. And Danny Kay would be there. Wow. And he, wow. Would, he would go and he would do a, you know, a little routine before the movie. Jeez. And there'd be a little show and then they'd show the movie. Now, I'm sure this didn't happen at every screening all right, the but time. Still, but still. I mean, but I think that would be a great tradition to bring back. Yeah. yeah. At least for limited runs where, you know. Yeah, a, premiere, it, you know. A yeah. premiere or, you know, for a week you get to see the movie with um, some of the actors either doing a Q&A in the beginning. And right. I know we have that kind of thing when it comes to the Egyptian and right, um, right. revival houses. But to have them, to have like a comic do a bit, you know, it's like Kevin Hart's in a movie and then Kevin Hart comes out and he does a routine before the movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That'd be fantastic. 
And I'm yeah. sorry for calling it a routine. <laughs> because I have, I'm suddenly my dad. But you know, it's it's definitely, uh, we are spoiled. We are spoiled by being in Los Angeles and getting to see these great yeah. actors, true. Yeah. That's actors true. filmmakers. I mean, some of the people we even, I, I Matt got to see Jerry Lewis at the Center Fam Line. Right, right. right. And yeah. that was another reason you're one of my lifelong heroes. <laughs> <laughs> you're mine for making a t shirt of Jerry Lewis <laughs> just shouting at people. <laughs> yeah. Describing a story about a stalker that would call him, and the stalker had <laughs> had made a, a idle threat toward his kids. <laughs> and he said to the guy, I'm gonna find you. And I'm going to tear your fucking heart out. <laughs> so I made t-shirts wow. with a picture of him saying that. <laughs> Fantastic. Wow. Fantastic. But yeah, Jerry Lewis, well, we man. We got every single person on their dream list, except for Steven Spielberg. That was the only one. He's a tough get. I'm He's sure. Tough yeah. Get. I, but, I mean, yeah. So trying to get for the cool. podcast. So yeah, we'll see. We're trying to get, get for the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. He's, yeah. 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 Uh, uh, <laughs> Not returning our calls. Yes, yeah, surprisingly. Well, it's, it's and it's not even the same Steven Spielberg. That's the weird part. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like a Steven Spielberg from Cincinnati. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's too busy. He's too busy. He's not even the filmmaker. You'd think he could <laughs> squeeze us in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. yeah it was tell him, tell him Oliver Stone is on the line. <laughs> 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 yeah. I don't get him. Uh, yeah, it, it, it is. Uh, it's delightful to see some of those. We had, I mean, I remember uh, some of the Q and A's were are better than. I, I mean, I remember them more than I remember the films. Like I remember Edgar Wright showing up with just the whole gang. You know, everybody, when I was at Arclight, we're running. It wasn't Shaun of the Dead. Was it um, it Hot had Fuzz? The, yeah, it had to have been Hot Fuzz. Right. Because I, I, saw him, I saw him speak after that. Uh, it was a screening somewhere. And yeah, he had, was, uh, and Nick Frost was with him. Yeah, I can't remember. I think we saw him too. I can't remember. And then I saw Nick Frost was. in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. And I said, hey, I'm a big fan of Hyperdrive. And he said, oh, thank you. And then he got some paper towels out of the paper towel dispenser, one of the automatic ones. Yeah. And he put his hand up to it and he said, computer. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah, they, they were doing Q&As like you were just like they did like three of them. But the problem is they were going to the bar <laughs> while the movie was running because they had seen it. And uh, okay, yeah. more and more crowded with their famous friends. Right. And eventually they were just so drunk because they were doing <laughs> giveaways. Like they had a box of DVDs, but they weren't giving away their movies. They were giving away bad boys. And <laughs> I forget what the other one was. <laughs> well, because you know, hot, so fuzz is, hot Fuzz is a bit of a pair. Oh, uh, uh, what yeah. is it? Um, the surfer one. Point Break. God damn it! Oh, nice yeah. pull, nice yeah. pull, Matt. Yeah, yeah. It was you could you got to pick one, That's but by great. the end of it, they were all the, because they were just getting drunker <laughs> and drunker, and they're just calling people, and so like they're coming in, and now the lead singer of Coldplay is there, and yeah. it just kept getting more funny. Oh well, me. but it got to the point where they were literally just throwing the DVDs at people, <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> just drunkenly hurling point break at these poor audience members. That's but uh, that's another one of my absolute favorites, though. Shaun of the Dead. Oh, Holy me too. Oh, yeah. yeah, of course. What Bringing it back to zombies. Oh yeah. yeah. What yeah. a what a film. What Love a, it. What a masterpiece of a film. I was so excited to be able to run that. Well, you know, all this talk of you being the projectionist, I have to tell you, I uh, the one thing about this whole COVID thing, I really miss going to. Oh my gosh! A movie yes, yeah. me and too. It. And I that know it's going to happen. It's yeah. going to happen, and and I have a feeling. I have a feeling that when this thing gets cleared up, I think people are going to be clamoring to go out to yeah. a movie theater. Yep. That's what I think. Oh, I really look forward to that's that. That's very nice to hear. Thank you for saying that because I'm being 
I think pessimistic about it. I'm scared people won't come back. No, so no. I hope it, you're right. You know, going yeah, to a yeah. film, it's it's a social thing. It's a thing. I want to get out. I want to see the big screen. Yeah, I want to yeah. experience the yeah. big sound. No matter how great your system is at home, seeing a film in a theater, it just can't be beat. Yeah. Sure. Right. Okay. I and, agree with that. And look, I, I thank you so much for being with us tonight. You were just oh, an I can't. Absolute it was my pleasure. Yes. You guys were just a delight. You're the best. You're no. the best. <laughs> now, is there <laughs> anything you're working on? Anything that you could plug or something we, you know, listeners can? Uh, uh, look if at they or... want to hear more uh, stuff, they can watch the documentary out of print. Out so, of print. That's okay. available. Cool. That's available on the streaming mediums, and it's a, a great film directed by uh, Julia Marchesi. And uh, it was a real pleasure to be in that. So rent it on any of your streaming vehicles. Cool. I will. Yeah. Doing yeah. it now. Tap, 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 tap. No, <laughs> well, guys, what do you say? We raise our glasses. Let's raise our glasses yes. and toast to the great Gariana Abeta. Oh, and the wonderful world of projectionists. Mm. Time for a listener shout out. Shout out. Oh, shout out. Shout out. Shout out. Shout out. Shout out. Shout out. This comes from our friend and longtime listener, Jay Gunn. Hey, right. Jay. Who sent us a very nice message on Twitter saying, I, We need one. Yeah. <laughs> Loving the Patreon rewards, videos, oh, cool. and, videos and so forth, since I'm UK based. I used to go to Tokyo twice a year before COVID, right. and I know mm. I know a lot of it, like the back of my hand by now. But I still love to see videos of you guys doing your stuff out there, oh, keeping cool. the dream of shopping and drinking in Tokyo <laughs> alive. That's right. T- take care, take care during these ongoing pandemic times, and hope the U.S. and the rest of the world can get the vaccine issue sorted. Nice. Thank you, nice. Jay. Very much nice. appreciated. Thank and you, sir. Yes. We're, uh, we're glad that you're enjoying uh, the Patreon content because, yeah. uh, yes, we now more to come. have uh, yeah. more to come. Patreon, more to, more to come. By the way, what is Patreon? Yeah, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm so happy you asked. <laughs> Patreon is this site. It's kind of like a social media meets Kickstarter type <laughs> site. Mm-hmm. And if you go to this site and you join our page, what you will get is you will get bonus audio, video, and perks. So mm. let's say you buy some of our merch, a mask, a t-shirt. We will include with your order special prizes. Donated, special prizes? Yes, yes, special prizes <laughs> donated to us by Biff Bang Pow Toys and Jason Lindsay. No way. So nice. you'll get your box and you're like, oh, look at this lovely glow-in-the-dark t-shirt. And oh, what's this? Huh, oh, I wanted this. That's exactly <laughs> what's going to happen. Well, yes. I mean, wow. this is, I mean, this Patreon thing. That's, it, it sounds great, right? right? It, sounds, it sounds expensive, though, Matt. Whoa, Does it? Well, is it? No, you're wrong about that, my friend. Because Patreon costs five dollars a month. No, wow. one tier, one price, five dollars a month. It opens a door to a beautiful new world. Wonders you can, world. You can walk through. You can run through. Man, you can I scurry spend, through. You can skip through. I, yes, I spend, I spend more can, money on can. Pez dispensers. I mean, <laughs> you do. Right. I know you I do. do. Right. You, you do. You spend way too much on them. <laughs> So, yes. And all you got to do is just go to Patreon and go to Monster Party, click the join button, follow the instructions. It'll walk you through everything. And then you are part of magic happens. Yes, you are part of the bigger, brighter Monster Party family. And and they're not they're not only just getting great content, but they're also supporting what we do. Well, yes. And I mean, we love to give back whenever we can, but. We have to tell you that just by joining and contributing to this, you're helping us continue the show. And it makes it so much easier because, you know, there are some expenses. Yeah. I mean, Mm -hmm. James is closed, first of all. Oh, Oh, don't even. Uh, (laughs) You know, I mean, he's got a reputation to uphold. Right. Well, we're monster party guys. We just can't go out in public. No, you can't be dressed like anything. Yes. 
Yeah. <laughs> the feather boas, all the things that you do. The, the ascots. But, uh, the hair, oh, ascot. <laughs> Don't get me started. Thank you, Sean, for bringing up the ascots. Yes, but it's yeah. a great deal. It and, is a great uh, deal. And if you're and yes, James, about, <laughs> if you're curious about the merch that Matt mentioned, you can find it on our Monster Party store on eBay, which is called, you guessed it, Monster Party Store. Ooh, we that's clever. Classic Monster Party logo t-shirts that glow in the dark. Yeah. And logo PPE face masks, cloth face masks. Yes. Corner, uh-huh. While Corner supplies Kobe. last. Get them while, while you can. Last. And while shipping is still free. Is right. it shipping, still free? Shipping is still it is, free? It, believe it or not. Yeah. Well, now that you have said it, I guess it has to be. <laughs> <laughs> and hey, let's remind our listeners that you can find us on Facebook and YouTube at Monster Party TV. Our Twitter handle at Monster Party HQ. Instagram, also Monster Party HQ. And hey, uh, please, whatever platform you're listening to us on, Take a moment, write a review. We would love to hear your thoughts and we will read it on the air. Mostly word for word. Yeah. On that note, I am Matt Weinhold. I'm Sean Sheridan. I'm Larry Stroth. And I'm James Gonis. Keep America strong. And keep the faith, monster partiers. Because someday, very soon, we'll see you all at the movies. Hey, the film's burning! Woo-hoo! No, 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 no! no. <laughs> Fire! Yeah. <laughs> I got the Infinity Gauntlet, yes. Uh huh. It's what keeps you know, our marriage alive. It, you know, it would have been nice if it was maybe a little more goldish, not oh, quite. Oh, shut a, the no, fuck no, up! Just, I mean, fuck come you. on, come Go on, don't fuck you yourself. I mean, wait, it's a it, fucking wait, bank. Was right? this for? Was this for like? Shut pre, up. Was this for preschool kids or something? It's like, hey, kids, would you like the Infinity Gauntlet to play with? <laughs> it's not what like, an <laughs> asshole. No, God, no, what a no, fucking. No. All right, See, wait a minute. Before no, we. No, 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 Garyana. Is, is it Garyana? Is it Garyana. Garyana. Like Gary, Indiana. Yeah. Okay. Garyana. Garyana. Okay. No, all no. the time in grammar school. Gary, Indiana. All the time. See? Yeah, great. Thanks. Oh. Thanks, Larry, for Perfect. trudging up some bad memories. Great. No, no, I, I, but isn't that what Wow, who else are you going to hurt? About? James James hasn't had a go yet. <laughs> no, I why don't, you, why don't you fuck with his shades? You know, I always that's like a, have... That's like a kid's set of shades. <laughs> what is that, play school shades? No, no, don't get me wrong. It's like... What an Matt, asshole. Matt, Matt has an amazing collab. Oh, now, amazing now here comes the, the new leaf <laughs> no, uh, retraction. No, 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 no. He does. So it's like, you want to see, oh my God, here's this rare figure. Here's this beautiful figure. And then you get to this... Rare? Kitty-like, kitty-like... It's a you bank! Know, mini gauntlet. I, I know, but it's... I'm like, not going to wear it around town. What the I, fuck? I, Wait, I, that's like what you're going to do. Is this like... Just the minute the fucking pandemic's over, you're just going to walk around town with your realistic infinity gauntlet (laughs) erasing people. Matt, do you really think I do that? (laughs) James, answer that. Well, although, although, to be fair, Matt, you know, just a... Oh, my God, now you. Okay. If you considered a little gold paint to maybe, you know... Yes. Um, um, James, James, no, no. You know why? What? Because if I, what would happen if I painted this toy? He'd he'd, he'd wreck the value of it. Actually. Oh, <laughs> yeah. so we're but, damned if we do. But okay, but look, look, it's like this. Let's say there's the. I'm so sorry. Toy. No, no, no. Just really I'm quickly. so sorry, oh, Ariana. No, no, no. It's just really quickly before Sean gets here. You know, there's the creature from the Black Lagoon figure from Hasbro, the cheap one for like you know fifteen bucks. It's cheesy and stuff. Or the more expensive, fancy one, you know, for sixty dollars. Well, I want the more realistic, fancy one. So I pay the extra bucks, you know, oh, to get the great yeah. looking creature. What do you think I am? Look at look at the amount of shit around me. I don't have time to pay fucking top shelf for every yeah, goddamn but, collectible that I have. But, but well, you you know what? That lifelike replica is beautiful, but I mean, if you had the real one, I guess that would be a lot better. But no, no, I no, guess no, you no. don't. You're yeah, gonna no. have to kick Joss no. Whedon's ass. 
call me crazy, <laughs> but aren't there some more realistic? <laughs> yes, there are. I'm not, I don't need. A, I yes, like the toy yes, quality you, of it. No, you, I like the toy quality, the plastic quality, because it looks like it was made during our time of toys. There like you go, yeah. you'd go into Toys R Us, okay, and there'd okay. be your Infinity yeah. Gauntlet, and you'd okay, be like, but, "Yeah." But this is why this I'm is why, Thanos. Yes, but when you look at some of those X Men figures from the '80s, and they look a little goofy, but well, those are shitty. Yes, <laughs> but the X Men figures of today—they're cool, they're badass. So, well, I'm just saying, <laughs> when I travel 20 years in the future, and they're making affordable Infinity Gauntlets that are uh, movie ready. Then we'll, we can revisit this. You can scare people with it by shaking change at them. It'll be like nice and loud. <laughs> yes, right. I can intimidate yeah. them with my wealth. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I can go into Spago and just like shake it. <laughs> Show me to my table. Okay. <laughs> Crazy question for you. So you have an infinity. Hold on. Problem. Sean's coming. No, no, no. Oh. Let's forget. Sean's coming. Oh, Sean's got to get in on this. Sean. Great. Great. Sean, uh, we started the evening with uh, Larry jumping all over my shit because apparently my <laughs> Infinity Gauntlet bank that I got for $20 it blows, is not blows, screen ready. It, blows. <laughs> it does not blow. It's a beautiful bank. The jewels look realistic, and it's a fun toy. And because does, does it make he sounds? has to – Huh? Does, does it make sound or something? Yeah, you put yeah. money in it, and you can shake it. At yeah. People. When you what rub it up it against the cat, it purrs. No, no, but when is there a button you press and the little light? Do, are there little lights on? The why, look, why, look, instead of lording this shit over me, why don't you go get this? Why don't no, you have this? I'm, I I'm like just, what I have. I don't need it to make sound and lights. I like it the way it is. You don't like the little you wouldn't like if it had blinky lights in the in the infinity gauntlet. You I, like I don't I, I for you know what? I don't need it. I don't need it. I got enough. I got bigger fish to fry. <laughs> All right. All right. I, I get it. This? Okay. They, it's like it's the low end. It's the low end infinity gauntlet. So you know. Wow. This is man. We've all been inside all right, you, way you, too you, long. You, you. <laughs> Look, <laughs> let me let me before we go on here. Have you met any of these gentlemen before? Just you. Just me. Okay. So oh, we got you for a treat. So oh, <laughs> so the loudmouth <laughs> the loudmouth nerd bully is Larry Stroth. He's apparently he's holding the uh, Star, Star Trek, Trek 3, three glass from... that is not screen ready. I'm sorry, but that's not like the ones that they used in Star Trek 3. But no. it's from Burger King. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, but it's ruined, Larry, because you put a drink in it. Yeah. Oh, no, see. Yeah, you no. didn't. It's value you didn't, is you destroyed didn't, now. You didn't, you didn't put blood wine in there. You didn't put no. Antarian brandy in. No, no. no. All right, it, all right. It's now, wait a minute. Wait, before we, we go on with another monologue, Sean Sheridan is the uh, classy, sophisticated one with the action figures in the back wearing the Hugh Hefner no, Star, Star Trek. Trek. Well, I'm Star getting Trek. there. I can't even paint a picture. <laughs> what is with all of you today? <laughs> I'm, I'm building the guy up. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm a, we're a little snappy here. Go, please and James, who I've, I, I've apparently let down since this thing has started, he's the one in the corner <laughs> wearing the red Monster Party T-shirt. And what's the hat there, James? This is the uh, Tokyo Giants baseball. Tokyo Giants. Hi. Yep. Yeah. Hi. We're all big fans of Japan. Woo. Yeah. Now, Gariana, I, I, I first yeah. met you. I knew you as Anna. Do you what? Do you have one <gasps> that you prefer? Uh, yeah, yeah, either, either, or yeah, just usually, I mean, it's just the shortening of it because people just get confused by Gary Ann. They would just get confused and stare at me because my parents made it up. Okay. Well, because of <laughs> that, I will be using up. that one. But, but Gary yeah, Ann yeah. is like your, like for that's work your, that's your, your given your, name, your celebrity name, right? <laughs> it is your full my Klingon name. name. What Ariana? You get old when you get old. Uh, you, you know, when you're a kid, it's it's all it's just Anne's fun. And <laughs> I would tell people, like so, Anne is fine. When you were a kid, like, when you were like kid. the the RCA Victor dog, you get that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> I love that dog. Love I like the real one. <laughs> <laughs> that one that they draw on the side of their products that blows that's not realistic at all it doesn't even light up why doesn't the dog light up 
If it's a vintage one, if it's vintage, you know, that was before the days when they could make when dogs lit up. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Well, (laughs) I can't argue with logic. Did you you introduce everybody? And are we going with, uh, and Gary. that's uh, yeah, Sean Sheridan once yeah, again, the suave, yeah. sophisticated yeah. one in the Hugh Hefner esque Star Trek robe, and the mountain of action figures, which uh, which is a very nice robe, and I is. am intimidated by that action figure collection. I'm just praying <laughs> it's okay. That it's all right. No, what no, a dick! No. What what the no. fuck is wrong <laughs> with you tonight? I just said, don't. Why do you? Intimid- so let me explain am, something to you, no, no, Larry. No, 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 no. Yes. Larry, yes. Larry is what you call a nerd bully. I so, am- so he's that guy when you were a kid, and you're the new kid, and you got your, you know, you come to class, and you got your toy that your parents got you at the store, and you're so happy, and, and you're like, look, I got my six million dollar man toy. And he looks at me and he goes, yeah, that's all right. But it's out of the package. And I have two. And there's a divine. Yeah. And he's the guy who's going to just shit on your fucking day. (laughs) He's the the guy. To make himself feel better. But it doesn't even work. Because it doesn't make him feel better. Yeah. He's the nerd in Trekkies. Remember the nerd in Trekkies? He's like, he's given this like costume. And like, it's like a beautiful costume somebody made for him. He's like, oh yeah, well, it's not exactly accurate, but I guess thanks. (laughs) That guy. Well, I would argue yeah. that's a different type of nerd, but they're adjacent. They're in the same family. Yeah. Because he's the guy who's like, he can't, like, he is happy with the uniform and he got it and he mm-hmm. wore it, but he can't stop himself from going, yeah, but it's not quite right because it's. Uh, uh, uh. Wasn't it that guy in the, that movie you did? What that you movie? were in about. Oh, oh Trekkies. Yeah, Trekkies. Yeah. 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 There was a guy like that in the That's movie. the guy we're talking yeah. about. Yeah. yeah. He's in the second one too, I think. He's a little. I, he's a little older, and he has a a wife, and he 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 yeah. did okay. He actually functions. He works in special society. effects. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No way. He did some special effects. Yeah. He, yeah. he works in. I think he does like digital effects in movies now. Yeah. yeah. Because if you watch that movie when they're doing their short Trek film, fan uh-huh. film, yeah, he uh, he does all the special effects, and they're really good. I remember yeah, yeah. like the, the, uh, all the, you know, what is the digital mold, whatever you call that. Yeah. Yeah. The computer magic. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. That, I, I bet it's wonderful to hear. Because yeah, it I, is I would have not, I would have bet you that that guy wouldn't have pulled out of that nose drive. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> hey, because Gary, Anna, can I, Gary, Anna, can yeah. I ask you a question? Yeah. Do you have any earbuds or headphones? Uh, yes. Could I, I just, so? I would like to hear how it sounds with that because sometimes we get a little yeah, better you might sound a little better. quality. Uh, okay. Let's, let's try it out at least. Wow. Okay. Um, Guys, check out her knives. Yeah. She's, oh, yeah. She doesn't fuck around. <laughs> <laughs> no, wow. She's ready for trouble. Yeah. <laughs> she's for listeners. If you're listening now, Ariana has a set of massive gigantic like jason for he's not yeah, they're all on the wall the and, um, and i just think, beautifully displayed yes but, and if i came over her house like if i'm a date or something i'd look at those i'd go oh no you know i'd be a little worried i'd want to maybe yeah she would use them on you immediately well that would be like a, well, yeah, immediately right? sean immediately <laughs> See, yeah. Yeah, yeah, wait, wait. Because James, you walk in and you'll, you'll criticize her about some James, toys she has. <laughs> James, what would happen with the knives? Well, it's like the end of Carrie in Carrie's house. All those knives just fly off. Just flip, flip, yeah. Flip, 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 flip. Yeah. 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 I just think it's nice that she is doing the show from her kill room. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's nice. Tastefully done. And I like that she doesn't use the big sheets of plastic. No, because that kind of then you know then what's what's the fun of that if you can't get True. splatters no. of blood on you know because your you uh, window and kitchen sink and because you you do this on a regular basis and you don't want to leave a lot of evidence around so that's why you have your well I know but it's you know it takes maybe just a little bit more work but you have that much more fun now the answer the answer These to the day room, the answer to a kill room without the plastic is red carpet red furniture. <laughs> sure. I like this. I like this. I have- and, and a good drain on the in the floor. Yes. There you go. We're discussing your kill room. I'm gonna have to switch to my computer because I did not realize that an i the iPad has no phone. I mean, right now you sound okay. Yeah. Okay. But maybe she could sound better. 
Yeah, yeah and, I, I'll, I'll grab my computer and hang on. Hang okay. On. Yeah, we, I mean, we, yeah, worst comes yeah, to worst, this is okay, but like, yeah. let me try it. Yeah. Yeah. Hang okay. On. All right. Hold on. Hell, I'll be right back. Oh, I was going to tell a story, but that's okay. <laughs> Here, I'll t- okay. So, so. Um, Once upon a time. No, no, no. James and Sean, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, oh. back when I was about five years old. You see this okay. picture? All right. This picture? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, I'm about five years old. What is that on the floor? It's, it's a police car. Oh, okay. okay. It's a it's a battery operated police car. It's uh, the Ford Galaxy police car, remote control, and and that's you in the picture. That's me. That's you know, you, there's was another that, picture. Was Here's that picture a gift two. You got? Was that a gift yeah. you got or something? Yes. So this was a gift that I got. Okay. okay. So this is this is like 1970 or 1969. Okay. Okay. Wow. And the thing about it is, my parents gave us some batteries. I started to make it go, and it made a very annoying sound. And my parents took the batteries out, and mysteriously. And you were still talking. <laughs> <laughs> funny, funny. So they take the batteries out, and they take the toy away. And I never saw it again. I never knew what happened. And ever since I was a little kid, I wanted to find out where could I find that police car. And it was always trying to. It was hard, but after a little research. I found out exactly what car it was. And guys, I have to show you today. Here it is wow. in all its glory. Wow. And, and it works. So this is another one you bought now? Uh, well, not exactly, but it goes forwards and backwards. So you stole it then? <laughs> How can you not exactly buy it? Well, you I'm, stole it from a I'm, Fifty-seven-year-old no, child. I'm not going to go in the park. Details, but look, and it came with its box. Wait, wait a minute. What is this? Is this? Wait, why is it everything? Why does it always have to be I'm, wait, wrapped wait, wait. in I'm sh- intrigue and like? How where'd about, you get the toy? How about how about? Hey, Lair, that looks nice. That's it great. Look. That's how, you get how about it? a nice thing? How where'd you get it? See, you see, how about saying a nice thing? Well, it's not I really love a it. horror thing, but I guess I guess it's cool. <laughs> yeah, wow! Well, welcome unless to Monster Party. Uh, unless it's, really a maniac, wow. why, but oh. it's a maniac. I guess cop it's inside. called the Man Party now. <laughs> what if it's maniac cop inside, Sean? <laughs> uh, uh, no, he didn't. Cop? He didn't drive a. He didn't he have, a car. Yeah, he didn't. What he car. He didn't have a car. Wrong. <laughs> Wrong. Uh, All right. Okay, that went over well. <laughs> well, is it is it a oh, reissue? Is that why it's not? Did you find it? Did you but find it in strange, your own house? That's strange to me. That's that, though because you've talked so much and you've pined over like all the other toys in the past you've had, like the pterodactyl and all that. Yes, and those are all horror and sci-fi. So I'm surprised that you were you were so attached to like a, a type of toy that any kid would have. Like, it's not really a monster kid toy, you know. Well, un- un- unless there was a zombie cop in it, or well, yeah, uh, but, I mean, you did know, you play a, with a it like dinosaur. that? Did you have it fight monsters? Well, like, well you know? the, that's the funny thing, Sean. It it was yeah. taken away before I had any chance to to really deal with it. So right. it's just one of these. So things is there a part of your life now that is whole now that you found it? Yes. Okay. Thank God. My, my life is somewhat complete. Of all the other things going on, I'm glad you have your toy, <laughs> your toy police car again. Because you know what we've <laughs> talked about this: the plastic King Kong that I missed at the birthday party, the t- rubber pterodactyl. There's you know a few other things in the police car. You know the police car, the the King Kong straw. And it's like now that I've got some of these things, it's like I'm I'm sitting in my little cave and I'm thinking. Oh, I think I'm. I think I could be happy now. You know? I don't think so. You could be. I, I, I seriously doubt that. Where did you find it? Hey. Um. So tonight's topic. Okay. We. You know what? I'm not going to even Very play this strange. game. We. We don't care. Yeah, we don't I care. Mean, okay. If it's, I'm, I'm glad you're happy and it's good. All right. Good. Okay. But so, display it nicely. Display it nicely on your shelf. Tonight's topic is <laughs> toys we wish we had. <laughs> But Larry, is there some mystery as to how you came upon this? This uh, you, you magical... must, you must, you must think, Larry, that when you're bringing this up so dramatically, we're going to ask the question where you got it. That's going to be I the first so. question. I guess so. I, Why are you I, ashamed? I, 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 I guess there she I, is. I just wanted to show it and have you guys go, "Hey, that looks great." But it you know cool. what? All right. We're done. But Larry, but Larry, the more the more that you hold back from answering that question, <laughs> you you know, going the less I care. 
You okay. built your own <laughs> pit it, to it, fall it, in. Like, you know, when you, you clean out your parents' house and stuff, yeah. and you throw things in boxes and stuff, and then you start going through them again, and you come across something. Okay, okay. yeah. You know, that's what right. we yeah. I understand why, why that's that why a, is that like a something to be ashamed yeah, of? Yeah, why why did that have to be an Agatha Christie novel? I <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, weirdly uh, going through yeah. my parents' stuff, I found an infinity gauntlet. <laughs> <laughs> Screen ready, I'm sure. <laughs> you know, ready. How many people find those when they go through old stuff? It's amazing. <laughs> did it have all the gems? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if it doesn't have all the gems, then forget. <laughs> right. yeah, See, we're already sound. having a good time. Does it sound better? Does it sound better? It does sound louder, which is just, what uh, that's better. So yeah, okay. better. I right? can hear you better. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Good. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. All, right. All right. So Let's get uh, this show on the road. So this was fun. And yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you guys. Thanks Thanks for coming on. On. See you later. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> so okay. So the name of this topic. Now, I do like diary or diaries of a film projectionist. What do you guys think yeah, of diaries. confessions? Ooh. Confessions of a, pro- of a film, of a movie projectionist, theater yeah, projectionist? Yeah, or f- film projectionist. Film yeah. projectionist. I, like I love it. I've confessions, or, or, I thought, has a little bit more of a yes. sexy dirty, kind dirty of. Dirty secrets. Dirty. Yes. Dirty yeah. secrets. Now, hey, I, I, defer, I defer to you. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I had a kernel of an idea, but Matt's the genius. And I so, like yes. No, I love your idea. I think it's a great I idea. That. I love that. And uh, I think most of us. Garyanna. Garyanna. Most of us have. Oh, it's like Patreon again. It's, oh it's we all, we all Call have. Her we all, we all have, we all, we all have, or most of us have worked at movie theaters. And so we all, we have some stories. Yeah. Actually, yeah. That we can I do. Share. Wow, awesome. <clears throat> yeah. I have some but good, good stories. It'll be, it'll awesome. be freewheeling and fun. <clears throat> yeah. 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 Cause yeah, I definitely want to hear about the whole projectionist experience. The whole projectionist thing. How you, hey, every how you got into thing. it. How you guys live. <laughs> what, are, you know, the. <laughs> The mystique, the mystique. Yeah, of the, the underground see, world. See, the funny thing yeah. is, I, I have a note here about when I worked at the movie theater, how we all looked at the projectionist. I mean, they were like gods. Say it. Yeah, I, yeah, they, just, they were definitely yeah. the coolest person in the building, for oh, sure. And you yeah. always wondered what happened in that little flickering <laughs> lit room. And I have some, we, I have some well, fun stories about the lit room, but I'm, I'm we're, we're right. running the we're running the show. So I mean, that's what we're yeah. doing. That's, that's it. We're that's running it. the show. But all right. Well, we want to hear this. All right, we're going to start this now. So give me a moment of silence. And wh- how we're going to do this, Larry? You want to tell her? Sure. So what we do is Matt uses his little voice, kind of introduce little voice the once show. again, condescending. We, <laughs> no. we 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 introduce ourselves. We okay. Say what the topic is, and then Matt's going to introduce you, and then we're going to go to town. So just just wait for us, and then when we get to the end, if if you like, you know, Matt will say something like, "Is there anything you're working on? Is there anything you want to plug?" I mean, that's your opportunity. If there's a a, a book or your anything or a website or anything, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Hold on. I got a helicopter <laughs> here for a second. I live in Van Nuys, home of the body bag. Get up. Ghetto birds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, call, get them over here. Get the get the tin man. The tin man. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> woohoo! Okay, takes a moment to wind down here. No, I could see that could never be annoying. Okay, I can whip out the gorilla mask if you want. <laughs> no, you don't. Don't blow your wad all at once here. No. <laughs> okay, here we go. Where are you doing this now, from Larry? Is this the same place or just that you just cleaned up that area or is this a different hell. room? It's a hole in hell. What do you want? <laughs> wow. You, you, go, you go from such extremes. <laughs> that Wow. I guess, the, I guess the cop car wore off. It's the, uh, <laughs> the fact that you found that in your own home, like they put it away and then you found it years later. That is fantastic. It's pretty it's great. Great. And it still works. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, I, I always kind of wish something like that would happen. Like, maybe that's what happened to that toy. They put it away, but nah. Yeah. You, know, you know, while you're on the topic, I mean, um, so that's a funny, that's funny. So it's like 50 years packed away. Uh-huh. 
to this day, to this day, I remember packing away my IG-88 box from 1980, you know, and it vanished. And I think one of my brothers who had an issue with me, like, threw it away or something oh, because wrong. it's vanished. I, I remember realizing how much IG-88 was worth with this box. I go, oh, my God, I have the box. And I go out to where the box is, and it wasn't there. Yeah. I, I hate it when life happens to you, you know? But you know what? It's funny because we had a Zoom thing just not too long ago, and some of the brothers brought up, like, things that I had done to them. You know, it's you – know, <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. we only get your yeah. side of it. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead, Pat. No, go ahead, Larry. No, go ahead. I cut you off right <laughs> Go now. ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm – no, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> For listeners <laughs> – <laughs> Classic. Come on. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go, go ahead. ahead. That's right. Go. Go. I don't even know where we're at now, so you better go. <laughs> for, for listeners who are just tuning in, <laughs> you're not using this shit. <laughs> Matt, I just wanted to tell you, I, I couldn't fit it in. I was waiting for a spot and just decided to let it go. That theater, The Strand in San Francisco, it's on market, right? Yep. Yeah, dude, I went there too. I went there with my friend Michelle French. We went to see. They were. She told me she was Larry. They're showing five films. It was like Hellraiser. Wow. It was like Hellraiser. <laughs> oh um, man! And a slew of other films. That, that sounds like Culver Theater. Yeah, it was Michelle like and I. Just, but... And and it was gross, Sean, because when we got there, <laughs> the terrible. whole floor was sticky. It, it, it was disgusting. Yeah, well, disgusting. You know, Culver, Culver Theater is not too great either. In fact, I remember one time I I found there's a dead rat in the supply room, which I had to <laughs> scoop up with the yeah. thing. And it was yeah. I'm was sure there were rats at the Strand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but the best part of this is Michelle and I we go somewhere like one or two in the afternoon. We saw five movies. Man. When we left, we didn't realize it. We get out, we're in San Francisco on market. It's fucking dark. <laughs> it's like right. after midnight, and we were freaking out. We're like, because we took a bus or something and we were scared for our lives. Right, no, right. And, and especially around that time, too. I'm yeah. guessing yeah, that, that yeah. place was that place has never been a great neighborhood, but no, no, no. Right, so this right. is right, 84, 85, I oh, think. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, and, and, and Michelle and I, but what we did is we, we kind of like huddled together. We, here we like <laughs> horror films, you right, know, and then right. we get out and it just, it, it's so, it's so pathetic. Yeah. So, but we were able to get onto a bus and nothing happened to us, but it was, right, right. it was terrifying, especially if you watch I, all these horror I, films. I my, my, yeah. my, my parents, my dad, I guess, I loved Bruce Lee mm-hmm. in like the second grade. <laughs> right. And I found out that they were playing Fist of Fury, Chinese Connection, and Enter the Dragon. Triple feature. Wow, nice. Downtown. I don't know if it was called The Strand then, but it was this, I think it was the St. Francis or something like that, but it was, yeah, but it was the same theater. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. so my dad just drops me and a couple of my friends, like (laughs) we're second graders. That's great. And he dropped us off. Now these are R-rated movies. Right, right. (laughs) One one of them I know is R-rated because there's nudity all over the fucking place, right? (laughs) Right, right. And, uh, and they he drops us off and it's me and my friend Henry and some other guy I can't remember. And, and we were all into Bruce Lee. We sat there and watched all three That's great. Bruce Lee movies. And then my dad came back and picked us up from market street wow. and drove us home. But like, that's great. That's, that's a good dad. Yeah. Because totally, totally. he had no idea what he was doing. Right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> So, Sean, did you, when you worked in the theater, did you feel like a lot of the people, they there were their own little unique characters? Like, all the people who worked at the movie theater that I worked at, I thought they were very unique characters. There was this yeah. one woman who was, like, fanatically religious, and she was a really? fucking freak. Yeah. I, I had, my, my the main thing was that the main guy who owned it was a really nice guy and too nice. He was kind of a pushover because uh, it would go through, he was the owner, but it, the place would go through regular managers. Yeah. One manager I got to know was really cool, but the the guy before him was I, we found out he was like a crackhead and yeah. he was literally stealing petty cash from the theaters of course you know? okay and, so, and the guy didn't say anything like like yeah oh, man yeah so, so, two, so two things at our theater remember our theater was more of like an a-list theater right After, okay we had like a uh, poltergeist star trek 2 wrath of khan the movies were making tons of money. Right. The weekend, what you're supposed to do is supposed to take all the cash and put it into this bag and, and take right. the bank. Uh, yeah. And there's like hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah, okay? yeah. This new manager 
who came in. His name was Bob, and he he looked a little like hipster. This is terrible what happened. They didn't do the drop on the Friday, Saturday. Saturday. They held all the money. Rumor has it they took this massive batch of cash and bought cocaine. Whoa. All the cocaine. I swear it's going to be all this money back (laughs) to put it back. Well, what happened was there was a mistake that they made. And and I forget the the cops, they came um, like either the following weekend. It was weird. The cops were all over our theater. We're like, well, what is going on? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it was yeah, tr- we had, fantastic. We had, we had forget it about. And had, remember, you I forget mean, about how much cash. Yeah, sure. So yeah, yeah, are, yeah. But the thing is, like, even back then, like, I, I wasn't like aware or, or worried about the danger. Like it was just, you know, it was the theater. People had fun. Yeah, you know, was, you're in. You're it indestructible. Was just, it was the you're thing. Young. Yeah, it was. Did it, you guys? Did you guys ever used to go to? Did what? you guys ever used to go to movies by yourself? Sure. Yeah, I did. Yeah, all the time. I used to go all the time. I would go to like three or four movies a week, and I would go see anything. And one. This is just one little thing. I, I went to this theater in Queens in New York and I went to see, don't ask me why, I went to see Without a Trace with Kate Nelligan and Judd <laughs> right. Hirsch way, way right. back. The only yeah. person in the theater. I was the <laughs> only one. And they ran it anyway. And I'm sitting there and I'm a little creeped out, but it's okay. You know, I paid, whatever. And about 20 minutes into it, I start to hear this rustling under my feet. I'm yeah. like, oh, shit. It's, it, it has to be rodents. It had to be rats. Oh rides. my gosh! Well, I, I I just I bailed. I, uh, yeah. I would too. Yeah. I, I, I thought I thought you were going to say that another person finally comes in and just sits right next to you. <laughs> It was Charlie Theron. <laughs> she she doesn't understand boundaries. <laughs> All right. Wow. Beautiful. All right. 